Okay. Welcome, everybody, to tonight's program. Thank you for joining us. We appreciate it on a Sunday night in the middle of the summer over here. Hashem, school started already, so that's good. Um, again, tonight's shear is shear 155. Baruch Hashem, I start off every week first thanking all the people by uh, promoting this year. You know, it's exploding every week. We get great, bigger and bigger, Hashem, and more people know about it. I got a text from somebody. They just heard about the share. I said, that, oh, where do you live? Which 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 continent? How can you not know about the share? It's almost four years. But uh, listen, every week we keep on letting more people know and reaching out to other people. So please, everybody who comes on, I thank all the people that post on the WhatsApp statuses, the email, they tell friends about it, they talk about it. And the Mechazic people, and uh, last week's share was a was a bomba. We got so many emails; it was very powerful. My Manas Friedman. Anybody who didn't uh, hear it should listen to it again. And again, tonight is Sichas Chaverim, but as a Dachin Yonim, we're getting an L starting Slicha soon, and uh, you know, so we really want to really want to get into this topic. And if anybody wants to join and get the WhatsApp, you know, the flyers every week, you can WhatsApp me at eight four eight. 525-0066 and save my number. Every Sunday I will send you the flyers. You can go to MenachemBurnfeld.com and sign up for his email list where he will send you every week the emails of the speakers, the the after, the, the replays, and everything else. So please join us. Everybody who's watching this on YouTube, you can click on the subscribe button to subscribe to the Coach Menachem channel. And you can like, and you can turn on the, you get the notifications every week when he uploads the Shiurim. You can click on the like button. And uh, more and more people can know about it. Uh, more and more. It's very important. Uh, I want to first thank all our advertising sponsors here, the Lakewood Scoop for promoting us here on Lakewood, Ellie and Ariel from Five Town Central for promoting us on the website, Chayla Kalfin from JCN for promoting us on the Jewish, all the Jewish digital platforms. Again, if anybody's here the first time, every Sunday night at 9.30 on this Zoom ID, we have different topics, different Rabbanim, different therapists, and um, just spread the word, let people know about it. Please join us Matchem, next week, September 3rd. We're going to have an amazing program with world famous. I call him world famous. He doesn't like today's or Shtigal Anav, but I, I find him to be one of the best therapists out there today. He's from Lakewood. His name is Matis Miller. He's been on the program a few times and he's going to be talking about a very important topic. He's going to be talking about enmeshment and healthy boundaries and raising healthy children. Just like I'm raising my healthy child who's up at 10 o'clock at night eating pretzels with me now. So we're going to, we're going to be, uh, we're going to be talking about that. It's a very, very deep topic, enmeshment and boundaries and codependency. And Matis is a, you know, a, a real, real professional and he's a tremendous, tremendous person. And every share he came on was very powerful. So please join us. It's going to be very meaningful. Let people know about it. Hope to see everybody next week, September 3rd. And uh, tonight's share, we have Zoyf at Revitsuk uh, Schwartz with us tonight from Eric Israel from Gvat Zev. A very important topic and get some clarity as we get as we're in Elul, as we're starting to blow the shay for now. We're getting into the slichas, so uh, it's hopefully it'll be a special shear and be machazik a lot of people tonight. And hopefully, thousands and thousands of people will listen to it before Rosh Hashanah this year. I mentioned even before maybe next Rosh Hashanah. And uh, we're sitting here tonight, we have a special guest, not only my son, but we have Arno Echfried with me in the in the corporate studios. He came to join to give the gematria tonight, shear 155. And he's going to tie in the Shear 155 into the program. So I'm going to turn it to him. Arno Echfried, take it away. Zbarach Hashem, B'siyat Dishmaya. We're holding by Shear 155. We're going to be discussing the amazing power of one mitzvah of Ahavta L'Riach Kamoicha. It's brought in the Svarim that Elul is Rosh Tevis. Ish L'Reyehu Imatan Yislev Yoinim, which symbolizes Chesed. By doing more Chesed than usual, in these days, we can achieve different heights in the in the Haftal Reach Kamoicha, and we could ultimately come to accomplish what it says in the Pasuk, Eidum Chesed to Yibona. So the Siat Dishmai, we came up to Gematria of Shir 155, Goimle Chesed, Gimul Mem Lamadud Chesed, be paying and doing Chesed. We should all be Zoycha to reach new heights and Chesed and be able to accomplish the Haftal Reach Kamoicha to the utmost. Amen. Sure. Yeah. No, Rabbi Schwartz, is a good match here? Stims? Okay, so we're going to start off first with the Coach Menachem. Coach Menachem, we're sitting on a Sunday night. It's 9.30 here. It's uh, What time is where you, Rabbi Schwartz? 4.30 in the morning. Why are we all yeah. sitting there? What are we here for? Tell us, tell us why we're here. Yeah, I want to welcome everyone. Like we heard, there are newcomers, um, people that are here the first time. So I want to welcome you. Welcome to Let's Get Real with Coach Menachem. 
Baruch Hashem, with a lot of Siyat HaDashmaya, we're doing tonight Shir 155, and we have a Sfus to have Rabbi Schwartz with us. And I believe we will be hearing tonight um, new concepts. And uh, our our audience is not surprised, you know, we've heard many times new concepts, and uh, we learn new things. Sometimes it takes time to digest, especially after uh, last week. Uh, we heard from Ramanus Friedman very interesting concepts, and the feedback was. Uh, I want to thank you all for sending feedback, whatever it was, positive, negative. It's always good to see the feedback, how the audience understands. Um, but it was interesting, the the concepts that he discussed. Should one think about themselves or not? Many people are in therapy for years trying to build themselves. And here we, you know, you're saying we shouldn't think about ourselves. Um, many people had a hard time understanding that. Chinuch, understanding, um, um, honoring our parents, no matter what. And uh, for many, it's a challenge. But uh, we're used to listening, hearing new concepts and trying to um, implement slowly but surely the right things. So tonight we are three weeks before Rosh Hashanah, and I'm sure everyone out, out there is doing something, working on Rosh Hashanah, trying to um, see what they have to do to not fall in to Rosh Hashanah as if they didn't know about it. Preparation, whatever it is, to prepare, to be ready for Rosh Hashanah and Hashem for the big day. And then there are those who are not thinking about Rosh Hashanah, and there could be many reasons. Maybe there's a fear. Maybe um, you don't know what to do. But um, hopefully, hopefully, uh, we, we all want to change. We all want to be better. We all, we all want to do the right thing. But then there are things that hold us back. Sometimes it can be, for example, perfectionism. I've tried so many times, it's not working. I've tried so many times and I can't do it perfect. So if I can't do it perfect, why should I continue? Is that what does Hashem want from me? So we give up, not realizing that Hashem doesn't need perfect. All he needs is growth, continuation. So that's one example. Many times it can be confusion. Am I doing the right thing? What exactly should I do? What does Hashem want from me? Where should I start? There could be a lot of confusion, and if you would have clarity, you know, you can go to a, a Rav, you go to somebody, a Novi, you can tell you this is what Hashem wants from you, start from here, and slowly, one step at a time, at least you know you're doing the right thing, and you're trying your best, which is amazing, but if you're on your own, and you've tried many years, and now is another Rosh Hashanah, so you're not sure where should I start, I've done so many things, I've done small things, big things, it did work, it didn't work. So one of the things we need is clarity. What should I work on, how to work on it, and very important to, to have encouragement, to be able to encourage yourself and to get encouragement from others. It's Some people have a hard time to encourage themselves, to say it's it's working, keep it up, keep on going. Go speak to somebody. Speak to somebody that knows you and tell them this is what you're working on. And they can tell you, beautiful, keep it up. You know, maybe you should do this, maybe you should do that. So you can discuss it. At least you can have some feedback. I believe tonight with Rabbi Schwartz, we will have a little bit of clarity, a little bit of maybe new concepts of clarity of what's does Hashem want from us? Where do we start? We've do, we've been doing Rosh Hashanah for many years. And, you know, some people are trying to work on my davening. How do I learn how to meditate? Whatever whatever you're trying to work on, which is amazing. But the Mitzvah tonight, we will be going into a new concept. And the Mitzvah with a lot of Siyat Deshmaya, everybody should be able to take it. And use it because I, I believe it's something it's a sugi that it's an agaya for everybody no matter where you are and with that we can grow ourselves and our environment and come closer to Hashem and Mitz Hashem with a lot of siyat and shmaya shkoyach beautiful beautiful opening okay let's get into it tonight's again we titled it it's time for change preparing for Rosh Hashanah with love the amazing power of one mitzvah 
That's the title. Tonight's shear um, is sponsored. First of all, I'm doing this course. Somebody texted me from growing a summer beard. Uh, my father, who's some still with Shlishan, my Shabyam and Ben David Shmiel, the Shama Shab and Aliyah, from all the Shiram and the thousands of people that uh, attend. And tonight should be a Rafu Shalema for Gilel Bat Tiki, a very special woman who actually has some special friends that love her. And wish her Rafu Shalema again, Gili Bat Tiki, she should have Rafu Shalema and everybody together should have her in mind. And this from all the people here and the thousands of people that listen to it, they should all uh, have her in mind. Okay, I'm going to read Rabbi Yitzchak Schwartz's bio so everybody can know who he is, and then I'm going to pass it over to him. Rabbi Yitzchak Schwartz is a Talmud Muvik of the famous Gadol and Sadak Rabbi Chaim Pinchas Scheinberg Zechel Tzadik Levrocha, the great Mashkiach Rabbi Shlomo Volbi Zechel Tzadik Levrocha, and a close Talmud of the world-renowned Mekubal Rabbi Yaakov Hill Shlita. Rabbi Schwartz is the author of a well-known swarm of, on a wide range of subjects, including Kabbalah, Musr, and Chassidus. He serves as the Moed Asr of Kihilas, Birka Shmuel in Gvat Zev and collaborates closely with his lifelong friend and colleague, Rabbi Shimon Russell, on major issues and challenges of norm norm normative chinuch, mental health, and other matters facing our generation. Rabbi Schwartz is a featured speaker and a place for Kepshanachi organization and also serves as a place for spiritual growth for thousands of parents in the areas of chinuch, shalom bias, and personal growth. And uh, it happens to be me and Rabbi Tzlach, we've eaten together many Shabbosim, we spend time together. <laughs> So uh, I know him, and uh, he's a Chosh and I'm very, very, very uh, honored to bring him on. And Matt, he's here, Rabbi Yitzchak, the floor is yours, please open it up. Yishakoyach, Rabbi Nachim, I consider it a great schus, privilege to be able to speak to your Chosh called the viewers, the listeners. Um, whatever I say, Shali, Shalach Hemdi. So, the Gros says when a person prepares to speak in front of a tzibur, this is in front of a, for me, it's in front of a screen, but I'll try and focus in on the fact that all of these names that appear on my screen are actually people alive and listening, and I wish I could be in your in your Daladamas, but uh, if that would be the case, then the sheer probably would not take place. But uh, I hope to be able to reach each one of you and uh, Consider it a personal message. Sometimes, uh, especially a topic like the one I'm going to speak about, uh, a person gets a little bit taken out of his comfort zone. You know, my dear friend, we call ourselves m brothers from another mother, Shimon Russell and I, we spend every morning speaking about issues that really are outside the comfort zone of most people and try and bring it into the comfort zone of most people. So that's what I hope to try and do uh, for me. It's in the morning, early in the morning for you. It's in the evening. And we'll get started. So we live in, in a new time. For me, it's a new time. It's not, uh, it's not the same as it was when I was a kid growing up. Uh, let, me give, uh, let me give just some, some uh, emotional. Emotional and an example and emotional. You know, when we get in the car and drive somewhere today, uh, we usually, if you're like me, you don't know how to get there. So you turn on ways. When I was much younger, I don't know if anybody here listening to this even remembers that we used maps, not the app maps, paper maps. And paper maps, I love paper maps, but they're gone. I don't even know if you can buy them anymore. So there are certain advantages, though, that Waze has. Uh, and we'll, well, everyone knows those, but those what those milers are. But uh, maps, a lot of people don't know. Maps were gewalt, tremendous. First of all, there's a geschmack in taking the map and opening it up you know, folding it back. And you can see, let's say you're in Ohio, it doesn't matter where you are, and you can see the entire state in one look. And then if you look usually on the other side of the map, it's more focused, a smaller area, it's divided up into areas, but you can see the big picture. You can see where you're going and where you're not going. You can see points of interest that are around you that you wouldn't have otherwise noticed. So there's a whole experience it's a different experience when you open a map, you see the big picture, you see what's around you, and you can see, actually you can see your progress vis-a-vis -vis the big picture. And we lose all that with ways. We get very, very exact instructions, what to do, how to do it, when to do it. And the big mile of ways is, if you're like me, if you make your mistakes, it reroutes you. It gets you back on track. When we were using maps, 
till you realize you've made a mistake. You may have been 25, 40, 50 miles off course, which wasn't a pleasant thing to do. But nonetheless, uh, I think the map, the big map enhanced the process, the trip in a way that Waze can't do. So you tell me, okay, but Waze, you know, you get this little tiny little screen and uh, the whole spectrum of what you can see is very narrow, very narrow. So zoom out. Problem is when you zoom out is you lose resolution. You don't know exactly where you are. So people tend to zoom in closer and closer so they don't miss a turn. So they see what's going on at every point. Uh, so it's a lot of focus on detail and very little focus on the big picture. There's also a geschmack when you finish the, the trip. If you look at the map, you can see where you came from and where you got to. And you just don't have that on ways. Oh, yeah, maybe there's some part of it. Somebody's going to send me in. Yeah, you can get it, Rabbi. Okay. But nobody does it, right? Because we're all focused on the fine resolution because we're afraid to make a mistake. So we're sacrificing the big picture for fear of making a mistake. And we lose out a huge amount on the way. So that's the, the emotional. And there's a nimshal in Avodah Hashem. In Avodah Hashem, we have two aspects of how we live. One is how we do things. We have halacha. And in order to become the halacha, we have to get into fine resolution. You have Shulchan Oroch, find a resolution is the Mishnah Bura, find a resolution is the Bira Aloha, find a resolution is Haintik Geposkim, and every single situation is a, in itself a zoom in on a particular situation, and we follow the Aloha, and that's a tremendous thing to, that's wonderful. We should follow Aloha, and we should get to a level of resolution which works for each one of us. It's not the same for everyone. But we have to be careful as we're following aloha, mekayim aloha, that we shouldn't get to a situation which is called like you can't see the forest for the trees. Because if you, you're misbinding, if you look too carefully with too fine a, a magnifying glass on the trees, you miss the entire experience. And the problem with that is you can be making huge mistakes for you, even though technically they may not be mistakes. So there's something similar in the very Hashem which Rav Dessler calls, I call it, the Dessler Paradox. What's the Dessler Paradox? This the paradox is the following. This, if anybody's interested, is in the third chalik of uh, Mirtha Melio, page 294, where Rav Dessler speaks about the whole Indian of kulas and kumas, how do you know when to be machmir, how do you know when to be makel, because if if you're not interested in seeing, make a special session with Coach Menachem for therapy, you can't be machmir at the same level on everything. You probably uh, you probably lose it. You probably lose it, as uh, Rav Dessler himself said. A person's yetsahorah is like a spring. The more you press it on it, the more energy it will have when it pops. So we have to be careful. Yetsah, something like a isha v'tinok, having makarav v'min v'doichu b'smo. Rav Dessler explains the following: No human being, especially today, especially today can focus on more than one thing in a quality fashion. Whatever we focus on in life, something else in our lives is going to take a hit. So if you have a career person and he's really focused on his career, so his family is in the background. It might even become at the back burner. And he loses resolution on his family. And he misses a huge amount till he gets to the level he wants to get. He says, 50 years old and he's got millions in the bank and all his kids are grown up and he doesn't know them. And he doesn't know what the Mrs. Nebuchadnezzar's wife had in raising his children. He missed the entire thing because he couldn't focus on two things. It's not all a chisorn, but we have to be aware of the fact that we can't do that. Human being cannot focus well on more than one or two things. And that's true in Avodah Hashem, explains Rav Desa. Also true in Avodah Hashem. For instance, he gives an example. There was a young man in uh, Slobodka, a Talmud of Dalta from Slobodka, and he had a minig that every Arab Shabbos, Friday afternoon, early, Chatzois, 12 noon, Chatzois, already he was Makabal Shabbos. He was dressed, he's sitting by the stand of the base Midrash, didn't do any malochas, Mamish Shabbos. 
Beautiful, beautiful minute. So the altar, Kedarka Bekoidish, was, uh, was a mechanic girl. And he walked by him one day in the base midrash, Chatzoy Serev Shabbos, all decked out in this Shabbos uh, finery, Parish Mamalocha. He said, Why? Wow, that's a beautiful minute. I see you every week doing this. Givalting. But what's it worth when, in your eyes, the rest of us are Machalale Shabbos? He was focused on one aspect of his Avoid Hashem, which was Shmir Shabbos, and he forgot there's something much more important. There's a big picture here. Are you becoming a Balgaiva from this? You know, the, the Rishayim say, where do we know that Gaiva is a prohibition in the, in the Torah? Because it says in the Apostle, we learn from the Apostle, the Smak, Vrom Levovko, Vishachachter Hashem Elokecho. Asasholim, when a person is a matzah of Gaiva, he forgets Hashem. So what good is Shabbos going to do if you forget there's a Rabbi Nishalayim? So if Desla says, so what are we going to do? And if in Avoid Hashem, we can only focus on a small area, one or two areas. And other areas of Avoid Hashem are going to take a hit to some degree. This is the whole discussion that Gavon Makas. How many mitzvahs can we focus on? Eleven, seven, ad shebuch, havakuk, v'midam malachas. Havakuk says, no, there's only one left that a person can put his entire focus on. Tzadik b'munoso yichya. Emuna. So the beginning of this uh, Desler paradox should really be called the Chavakuk paradox, that we can't focus on more than one thing, Bishlemas, Halvaiku focus on one thing, Bishlemas, at the same time. So Rav Desler says, so what are we supposed to do? How do we choose what that area, one or two areas is, where our main focus is going to be, knowing ahead of time that something else we're, we're likely to miss out on. The Desu says a very simple answer. There are klolim and protim. There are issues which are central, fundamental to Torah, and there are issues which are less. So focus on the fundamentals. And he gives a few examples. Bitul Torah. Bitul Torah is connected kulam. Loshan Hora is connected kulam. Now, I want to add one to Rav Desler's list. Though I have to learn how to you know, I was sitting one morning with my dear friend Shimon Russell, and I explained to him later on, Rav Osher Weiss said something similar that why is it a cloud godl but Torah? What does it have to do with the rest of the Torah? A famous question. So Rashi says, the cloud godl but Torah, so it's in a different place, Rashi says it, that Reacho. The Rabbi Nishlam is our friend. And there's a parallel between the Rabbi Nishlam as our friend and, as our, and with our friend, with our real friends, with our boss of Adam friends. So how does that correlate? So just the mechanics of it is the following. Every mitzvah, Rabbi Kiva said, is that klau godl That means every mitzvah, be'norun l'mokrim, be'norun l'chaveira, is the foundation, at the very foundation of it, is the mitzvah of after Rachel So that's easy when you're talking about chesed, when you're talking about a gemach, talking about uh, azag, tazag. But when you're putting on tefillin, it's not as easy. And the tzada shove, the connection is the following. Connection. To be able to connect with something beyond your own limitations. Beyond your own Mechitza of your boss of Adam, your Eivorim, your mental and physical limitations can be expanded if you connect to something outside of you. And that's what the Kol Atara Kula is about. It's connecting something beyond, something that's besides you, something that's other. And it's very, it fits in very well with Rabbi Kiva in his first Gilgal of Talmudim, we'll call it. It's also a Desler paradox. The Bekiva had 24,000 Talmudim, and they all died. They all died. Why do they have to all die? So the Gemara says, because they were not noyeg kovod zeloze. I've been asked, that, that's, that's a chiv misa? That's, that's a chiv misa? It's not a chiv misa. The answer to that is, it's right, it's not a chiv misa. But what's the point of 24,000 Talmudim 
being hoige betera, being oisig betera, if they miss the foundation, they have no foundation, if they can ignore, be mezalzo in anything beyond them, their own chaverim, they're not connecting. If they can't connect to each other, they're not really connected to Hashem, and they're not really connected to Torah. Chaval to let this go on, let them die. Zakoin lo yamusu chayovin. So Rabbi Akiva experienced this paradox. They're focused totally on Limud Torah. But the big picture of after Ach they missed because of that ultra fine resolution. So too occurred in the time of the second Beis Hamikdash. The Gemara says, why was the Beis Hamikdash destroyed? The second Beis Hamikdash because of Sinas Chinam. Sinas Chinam. The Gemara asks, Sinas Chinam is that worse than Gilur Rash because Domin Avoid Azora? The first Beis Hamikdash destroyed for the three Gimel Averes Hamuras. So the second one gets, gets destroyed it should be something equal to it, at least equal. How does Sinas Chinam equal that? So Gemara brings proof. Yes, Sinas Chinam is actually worse. Then kol aver shebeter gilgrash for the zdom of oydazor, and the Gemara says, and if you think that we have already got past that, you know, okay, the basic interests are destroyed, and we're in the we're into gullus. Okay, the rest is just picking up the pieces. That's this tnu einechem bebiro. Look at the harabais. Do you see the basic mikdash came back? As long as it's not back, kol dor shelo nivna basic mikdash biyomov kilo nechov biyomov. It's a reminder to us always, if the Beis HaMikdash is not there, it means we still have the same problem. Sinas Chinam. We're going to talk a little bit more about Sinas Chinam later on, but it's the flip side of the Aftarach HaKamoycha. It's the exact flip side of the Aftarach HaKamoycha. So Sinas Chinam then is the Klaugodol Shekenegeda Torah. It's the Klaugodol that violates all of the Torah. So what's the point of having a base Hamikdash? So there's another example of Gemara says they were oisik peter and bayasheni, and they were oisik in chesed. So they have tur, they have chesed. What else did they need? So here's another example of the Desler paradox. They were over focused on Torah and chesed, and because of that, they overlooked the fact that they were jealous of each other, that they were suspicious of, of each other. They were choshed b'ksherim. The girl says, "You know what the problem was there? In second base of Mikdash, there were tzdukim and baytusi, and that was already like today. Let's say reform, conservative, or you know chilonim, whatever they call them here in Eretz Yisrael. And everybody's antennas were up. And the minute they saw something slightly different in another person, they were choshed immediately. He's an apikuris, and they were roid of him. Ad chorma." Okay, the the near duff doesn't remain uh, silent, and he returns fire, and that was the sinus chinim. Because to hate somebody starts with suspicion, it starts with rejection, it starts with disapproval, and it easily evolves into something much worse. And he actually says in Bayesheni there was more shvichas domim than in Bayesherishim. But the Gemara is talking about the root cause. Through cause, because they were unable to accept the fact that somebody could be a little bit different than me and still be a kosher yid. And I'm adding now the reason they had that such a difficult. First of all, they were afraid. They're afraid of losing the masurah. They were afraid what would happen. So they were triggered. But at the core of that is when a person is afraid, it means he's not really secure with himself. He's not comfortable. He's not brave enough. He's not confident enough to reach out of his comfort zone. So, but after Acha Kamoicha calls upon us, you want to connect to the Rabbi Nishlam. You want to connect to Torah. You have to get out of your comfort zone. You have to be able to hear new ideas, to conduct yourself in new ways, all of Torah. And the Desler paradox, what we call Desler, teaches us that this should be our main focus. If we have one thing we can choose on, let it include everything. And that I would like to suggest is really the Davoid of Elul. It's really the Void of Elul. We know there's a, an acronym. All the posts can bring it. The 
betrothed, beloved. Because both and Christ are, are in love with each other. When can you feel this? In Elul. That's a little bit different than Musa and Cheshbon and Nefesh and all the other things which are very fine and important. But that's not the main focus. The main focus is first to know that Rabbi Yisham loves us. And the best way to feel that is to exercise that faculty that we have, the capacity for love. It's not easy to do that with somebody you can't see, but it's a lot easier to do it with somebody you can't see. After connect with somebody else, you'll learn how to use Ava, what Ava really feels like, what it really is. I want to bring just take it one more level and then we'll open it up. Halacha, fine resolution, halacha is important. But when it causes us to lose our focus on the big picture, then we're in trouble. And it's important to remember halacha is an instruction book. Halacha is not a tachlis, a goal on its own. Oh, he's a big shomer halacha. No, we say he's a shomer total mitzvah, not a shomer halacha. Halacha are the instructions how to be mekayim mitzvah. Mitzvah, the root of the word, word means actually to connect something. Tzavta is when two people are connected, they're called bitzavta. That's what the mitzvah is. Mitzvah is what connects us not only to Hashem, but to each other also. Mitzvah. How do you do it? How you make kind of Allah teaches us how to do it. But it's not a, like Rabbi Sol Salah it's not a Bama Bikne Atmo. It cannot take center stage. Center stage is the mitzvah, and even the mitzvah itself is not center stage. Because the tachlis of all the mitzvahs, the Zohar Kodesh says, mitzvahs are eitzes. They're guidelines how to reach the one mitzvah, which is koilo, all the mitzvahs. Which is that? Havakuks. Anoich Hashem Elokecho. The mitzvah of Emunah. They all aids us how to reach Emunah, how to reach Dveikas Bashem. So it's not uncommon to see people who are very medactic in Aloha and feel very distant from Hashem. They don't feel Dveikas because they're missing one other piece. And that's the tachlis of all the, all the, all the mitzvahs, all the Aloha, all the mitzvahs is, says the Vilna Goyen, Tikkun Hamidus. Says the Vilna Goyen, something startling. If a person is not Oisik, his entire life in refining Midas Toivos, Lama Lachanim. What, what, what's the point of being alive for? What's the deeper meaning what the Gona is saying? It's Bor Hashem, we have Chesreinus. And we will always have Chesreinus. We have Chesreinus. Our friends have chesroinus. And the Ben Shem even made a world that's filled with chesroinus. That's what Tikkun Amidus is. It gives us a tachlis in life. It gives us purpose. Tikkun Amidus. Here the Ben Shem gave us something imperfect. And it doesn't matter whether it is our fault or not our fault that we have that chesroin. It doesn't matter. It's, in, it's at my doorstep now. I have an opportunity now to fulfill the tachlis in life. To be a partner with the Rabbi Shalom in perfecting my separations. So, how does that fit in? We, hopefully, a healthy person accepts himself and loves himself. All right, is if you threaten his life, the first thing to do is protect himself. Ah, we're filled with Hisrenas, but we accept him. We accept we're not perfect. And despite our imperfections, and they may be great, we love ourselves. And we should love ourselves. That's the key to understanding how we can love other people. Not only do we recognize that they have chesreinus, but we embrace those chesreinus. This is just like my own midah, which is imperfected. And I turn to it with love and compassion to myself to make myself better. So too, I should look at my friends and say to myself deeply that even though they have chesreinus, I'm going to accept them and hug them. That's the opposite of what they did in Vayashani. When they saw a difference, they rejected. So that's as a psicha. They'll hug up the Bach. Uh, the Bach brings this Barichas and Hilchas, Birkas Atayot, that Mibne Ma of the Horetz, why was the base of Mikdus destroyed and there it's all destroyed? So Birchu Batayot, Trila says the Bach, you have to understand what that means. That means their whole involvement in Torah, with the Limud Torah, with the Chesed, 
But they forgot one thing. What's the tachlis? It's to be dovet b'shkina, in the ruchnias of Torah. So what's the point? We don't need that base in the fish. It will not. It won't help us in any way. And so explains of Tzadok Akoyen, several places, the tachlis of a yid is not to be mekayim balocha, not even mekayim mitzvahs. We mustn't turn the mitzvah into, I don't mean avoid a zora in the classic sense, but avoid a zora locha, like the Gemara says. What we really should be doing in our avoid Hashem is looking, how does this mitzvah, how can I help, how can this mitzvah help me be dovik Hashem? How can my interaction with another person help me be dovik with him to be kind of mitzvah after Achu Kamoicho? So as we go through Elo, if we can exercise the faculty for loving something beyond self, because when we're focused on self, it's Verom Levovko Veshachachtes Hashem Alekecho, then we really forget the Rebbe Hashem's love for us, because we're too self centered. And the Torah calls back, beckons out to us. You have to be others centered. As we do that, we become greater. We become bigger. We've expanded ourselves beyond our own minuscule limitations. And the Rebbe looks at that and says, you know, he's he's really going in my way. That's my derech. The Rebbe that's my derech. I create a world that's closer, that's filled with chesronis, that's filled with problems, and yet, Loves every single one of us. Me? Us? With all the, all the problems that we have? Yes. We should take that message with us during Elo. I think that could be very helpful for all of us. So that's a psicha. I hope that will be uh, somewhat uh, open up the, the gates to better understanding as we go along with the questions. It's beautiful. I want to remind you to do the wash your hands. I'm going to do the polls now, and uh, we're going to ask the oil a few questions about uh, stuff, and uh, we're going to get into it. Okay, so long polls over here. Let's see. Let's take everybody's knowledge over here. Answer to the best of your ability and answer to MS. It's all anonymous. Number one, what aspect of the upcoming Rosh Hashanah resonates with you the most? Four options. Reflecting on personal growth and change. Being able to connect to myself and reflect on the past year. A time to slow down and think about my life and my goals. Or number four, I personally don't look forward to Rosh Hashanah. I can't seem to connect to it. Second question. What is the most critical prerequisite for effective davening? What do you need to do to get ready for a good davening for Rosh Hashanah? Three options. Either complete and focused kavana, intention. Strengthening one's connection, the vacus. Or option three, reinforcement of faith, muna, and trust, bitachan. Number three, what personal change would you like to pursue for this upcoming Rosh Hashanah? What's your, as they say, how do they say in the Gosh world, what's your uh, New Year's resolution? What would you like to do? What would you like to really pursue this upcoming Rosh Hashanah for the New Year? Three options. Enhance my daily acts of kindness and generosity. Practice more self-reflection and introspection. Being more internally present. Being more, some zef. Or option three, I want to dedicate more time to davening and learning. Fourth question. What does v'yahafta l'reich ha love your neighbors as yourself, what does that mean to you? What does it mean to you? Four options. Treating others with the same kindness and respect I expect. Number two, prioritizing empathy and understanding in all interactions from others. That means when you see people acting certain ways, you have empathy for them and you're understanding they're coming from a different angle. Number three, supporting and helping people in times of need. That's what I have to recommend. Or option four, cultivating a sense of unity and community among, among all people. Achtas, and putting things together and just being more sazamandik. Those are the four questions. I hope I read them clearly. Answer them, take your time. We'll give it a few seconds. And then after the questions, we have Zoychet, Rabbi Tzach Schwartz. We can ask him anything and everything. And uh, let's really try to chaperain and uh, take advantage of that. Rabbi Schwartz, can we take advantage of that? Absolutely. That's what I'm here for. Why do you think I got up at 3.30 in the morning? So the should take advantage of you. Exactly. Okay, we're going to give it a few more seconds. And then we're going to share the polls. Rabbi Schwartz, if you want to comment on the polls after we're done, let us know. And then we'll jump straight into questions, okay? I'm going to start with a live question, actually, first. I'm going to unmute you. Just wait till uh, we're ready. Okay, I'm going to end the polls. 
five, four, three, two, one, zero. Okay. Okay, so I'm sharing with everybody the polls. So the first poll was, what aspect of the upcoming Rosh Hashanah resonates the most with you? Rabbi Schwartz, 50% of the people here feel reflecting on personal growth and change. That's what they look towards Rosh Hashanah. 70% of people being able to connect to myself and reflect on the past year. 22% a time to slow down and think about my life and my goals. And 11% I really don't look forward to Rosh Hashanah. I can't seem to connect to it. Any comment on that? Wow. Okay. I see that one of the uh, the fifty percent. Let's talk to the fifty percent right now. Personal growth. I want to say, uh, you know, just something about what's called self help, personal growth. You know, what does that mean? What does it mean, personal growth? Now, I, I'd like everyone to ask, think about for a moment. What do you mean by personal growth? Do you mean you want to be perfect? So that's called unreasonable expectations, and then there's no purpose in life, because the whole purpose in life is to have chisernas and to be able to work on them. Is it feeling comfortable with yourself? Is that what personal growth is about? Does it mean you want to be on the madrega of the Chofetz Chaim? You know, what does it mean? I'm not going to tell you an answer, because everyone needs to think about it and think of, is my goal really something that's worthy? So the whole idea of, you know, this is getting back to after um, the Very interesting. The Pesach says, when you're getting connected to this, I'm not just darshaning. The Pesach doesn't say, Furthermore, it doesn't say in the Pesach, It says, He becomes not the subject, but he becomes the object. You have to give love to your friend. And what the Torah is saying on a deeper level is, you've got to be outward focused. You've got to be others focused. You have to be focused on something beyond yourself. And, you know, they have this thing called, called today, what's it called? A selfie? 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 I mean, that's hefech kol ha-Torah kula. You know, women, please be moichel me, but I know that some women, uh, I had a lot of daughters and I have a wife, they have a mirror, a mirror that has two sides to it. One side is a regular mirror. The other side is a magnifying mirror. And I remember when I became, you know, I first uh, got introduced to women, so to speak, and I got married and I saw this magnifying mirror. And I think, what in the world is that for? Like you're trying to get out you know, a splinter in your finger. You don't need that. Like, what is it for? So my wife kindly explained to me that, no, you don't understand. If there's a small blemish, you can't see it in a regular mirror. So you need a magnifying glass. That's, that's what Musa is about. Musa is about somebody who feels secure with himself. He knows what his tafkid is. He's happy with himself. And he wants to be more beautiful for others. Others include reyacho, reyavicho. Others mean your friends. Others mean your relationship. So he wants to blow up his kisroinus, his little black dot, so he can remove it. But what happens is if a person thinks that they're ugly and it makes him sick to look at himself, and then you take a magnifying mirror and you stick it in front of them, because they faint from Kalisha Zadanas. So if you apply to yourself, Musa, self, 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 you make yourself a selfie all the time. If you don't have a healthy focus on life and a healthy focus on Torah, you could faint. You get Halisha Sadas. And it's the opposite direction of what the Torah teaches us. means don't look at yourself. I'm glad the Menachem, you mentioned what was mentioned last week. I was hoping I wasn't going to uh, contradict anybody when, when you mentioned that. And I, based on what you said, I see that I'm not. I said, Stop thinking about yourself so much. Think about somebody else. Every time you start thinking about self, about me, personal growth, what's personal growth? Personal growth is to be able to focus more of my energy, more of my time, more of my qualities on something else, on somebody else. 
on Reyacho Vareya Avicho. And the more we do that, the more re is revealed to us who we are, because there's a part of me that doesn't yet exist, that we're not aware of. Each one of us has a chilk inside of him. And his chilk has a chilk of you inside of you. If you don't connect to that, listen, if there are 600,000 yidin, let's talk about the classic numbers, that means I have one chilk of me, and then there's other 599,999 yidin who also have chilk of me. And if I can't connect to them, I'm missing part of me. So who's the me? Who's the self? Who's the growth? I suspect that this idea of uh, personal growth, self-growth, is a concept that we're influenced from, that influenced us from outside sources from the Torah. I don't think it's it, it's not beneficial, and it's certainly not Torah-focused. torah focus is, where am I in it? That's where you're going to find yourself. You're going to give to your friends. You're going to give to your community. You're going to give to the Rabbi Nishan. You wash your face. Hilo said, and he washed his face. So he's doing chesed with himself because he wants to be a hidu mitzvah in front of the Rabbeinu Shalom. Rabbeinu Shalom created me as a tzelem elokim. Let's make it beautiful. He wasn't even focusing on the dirt on his face. He was focused on how washing my face can be a benefit to others, can be a cover to the Rabbeinu Shalom, can impress other people so they'll come close to Torah. So I'm sorry if I'm not answering the question of 50% of the people, but I'm suggesting a different way of looking at it. Personal growth, take it out. Take the word personal out. It says, how am I fulfilling my top in life? How am I going to be dovic with the Rabbi Nishan? How am I going to turn Rosh Hashanah into a situation that will help me become dovic with Hashem, help me to become a better Oivet Hashem, which is all included in the mitzvah of after Rachel Kamoicha. And all of our desire to feel good about ourselves, which we should feel good about ourselves. That's why the post says, after the puts our friend before us, come oicho. You want to feel really good about yourself? Really love yourself? Practice love to others. Others, meaning like Rashi says, Leacho, Reavicho, your friend, your real, your boss of a dumb friend, and the Rabbi Shem, who's our friend. He says, as we do that, more we expand, we become bigger. And we're not so limited, then we feel better about ourselves. And that's okay. But by thinking why we don't feel better about ourselves and trying to make ourselves be feel better about ourselves and self, 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 that's self-centered. Okay, let's go to the next part of Schwartz, okay? A lot of live questions people want to ask. What's the most critical prerequisite for effective davening? It's pretty split over here. Complete and focused kavana, intention, strengthening one's connection, the vacus. 28%, 40%, and 32% reinforcement of faith and Munabatak and so it's mamish split across the board over there. Any any comment on like what, what we need to do before? Yeah, that's that's there's a there's a safer uh, which is not accessible perhaps to everybody, but there are long dim also on this uh on this uh, podcast, whatever it's called, the uh, Nefesh Haim of Haim Veloshima. The whole shah, the second shah is devoted to how a person should dive. And then he he starts out, he opens it up by a very simple approach, which the Magid, we know the Beis Yosef, or Yosef Karo had a gilim in a Shemaim, a Magid, the Malach came to him and gave him Tochuchas Musa, gave him instructions how to be over Hashem, uh, told him, focus on the words. Just be Machab in the words. The Talmud Baal Shem Tov bring out that uh, the Beloshan Melitza, that uh, in Parshas Noach, the Talmud of Baal Shem Tov, bringing the name of the Baal Shem Tov, long erich is Parshas Noach, the Nenyan of Tefillah. And they included in the Pasuk from the Sfinoget, the Noach, Bo El HaTeva. Mishpochu told Noach, come into the Teva, the, the Ark, what they call in English. The Teva in Lashon Kodesh also means the Word. Go to the Word. Focus on the Word. But be able to focus on the Word without any deep kavonas, Without any gematrias and drushim, best to learn in a, a, a tadav in a siru, has no pirush at all, but big letters. Boil a table. Everything is in the word. But to be able to focus on a word, 
The prerequisite is, just like we said before, forget about yourself. Disconnect. Disconnect from self. Everything that brings you back into your limitations of your own Dalit Amis, the debts that you have, the business that you have, the problems you have at home, the chinuk, the, everything, your stomach ache, whatever it might be, you have to spend at least a little bit of time disconnecting. Here I have an opportunity now to disconnect from my own personal limitations. And where do I go with it? El Hatevo, to the words. And I'm going to tell you something now, which takes a lot of time, a lot of practice, I should say, of just focusing on the words. But to give a chizuk, is it worth it? Let me share with you what the Rebbein Volashina explains. The Gemara Bracha says, Tfila is Dvorim HaOimdim Berumo Shel Oilam Uvnei Odom Mezalzim in Bohem. I'll explain. According to Rebbe Nefesh Shachayim. Tfila are Dvorim HaOimdim Berumo Shel Oilam. The words of the Tfila of the Shemun Eser, the words of David Amela, the Tehillim, are oile, they ascend to the highest elevations of the Ruchnius worlds, of oile matzilas. They're supersonic rockets. Each one of them is oime berumu shal oilem, u b'nei odom, mezauzelin bohem. And when a person davens, he just thinks it's a page with black ink on it. And he thinks he's just talking about whatever the tefillah Reminds him of that I'm missing enough parnosa and I have debts and I have tzoros and I have this. It's really a trip to Shemayim. And because Anshik Nesag Doyle knew what they were doing, they knew the power of words. They knew the power of letters. They knew the power of the vows of the Nekudas and the Tamim. They put in the words of the Tefillah, a tremendous, we'll call it a magical ascent, that when you put your mind to it, and you stop thinking about self, self, self. And you try and just think about the word. You connect. It's, again, about connection. If I don't know how to connect to another person, how am I going to connect to a word that's print, printed on the page? If I connect to the word, I'm connecting to a vehicle which takes me. Who is me? It's not my body. Me is my nefesh, my ruach, my neshama. It connects to the word, to the teva. Bo el ha teva, the Talmudian of the Baal Shem Tov said in his name. Connect to the word, because in the word is I use the word magical is the ruchnius engine, jet engine that catapults you to Shemaim, to the, the highest level of atzilus. If you look in the sidurim, those of you who daven, Nusat Svar, the Vasidish Sidurim, sometimes they write in different parts of the tefillah. What if the ruchnius worlds are parallels? The Shemun essay is Oilam Atzilus. So we take ourselves, we attach it to the word. The word lifts us up. We lifts us up to the Oilam Atzilus. We finish the Shemona essay. We come back down. We come back as a new person. We've changed ourselves. And guess what? We changed the upper worlds also. Because that word, that my nefesh, my ruah, my neshama, my mouth, Davin. Those words were missing in Shemayim. Those parts of my nefesh, Ruach and Neshama, were missing. The Rebbe was waiting for them to be mashing his world, the Oilam Atzilus. So I would suggest, first of all, not worrying too much about it, because like the Nefesh Chaim says, it takes a lot of practice. But basically what I'm saying is spend a little bit of quality time, a minute or two, and if you don't have time before davening, that's the best thing before davening. But at least before you get to Gwali soil, just for a moment, be cognizant of the fact that I'm not my body. And I can reach places which there's no other time in the day that I can reach. The oil of and be connected with the Rabbi Hashem completely. My nefesh, Ruach and Hashem, I'm completely double with Hashem, is during Shemun Yasei. One other point. And it really fits in with what we were saying. Says the Ariza, the most important hachonah for tefillah is to be makabal on yourself, the mitzvah of the after the achot kamoy. Printed in the Sidurim, have a look. Before you even start the brachas and the karbonas, accept upon yourself the mitzvah of the achot that I am here to reach other people, to reach other places. Le'acho v'le'avicho. 
That's my tachlis. And in my tefillah, I want to do the same thing. In my tefillah, I want to include my tefillah, because my tefillah is connected with other people's tefillahs. We're a minion, we're a tzibur. And this tzibur is connected to another tzibur. And it's connected to our klai so. And all the Shemona Esra is in Loshen Rabi, not in Loshen Yochi. We're davening for Klaus. So. I want my tefillah to be a part of everybody else's tefillah. We, Amisol, are davening to you, Rabbi Shloylam. Spend some time thinking about that, that through tefillah we become connected not only to ourself and my the money I'm missing in my bank account, we become connected to others and we become connected to Rabbi We bring everybody together and bring it to the Rabbi Hashem. He says, Rabbi Hashem, I know in five minutes, ten minutes, I finished my essay, we're all back down here, but it's worth it for five minutes. You'll come back a different person, and you change the world. That's a monus chachom, but you've changed the world. To the next poll. <clears throat> what personal change would you like to pursue for this upcoming Rosh Hashanah? Again, it's split across the board. 35% of the people enhance my daily acts of chesed and generosity. 39% of the people practice more self-reflection and introspection, being more internally present. 27% of the people dedicate more time to davening and learning. Except for the second one, they're all good. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's more the thing. More being chesed. more internally present. Be not about yourself, but be more present in the words. Yeah, you got to be careful with that, though. You have to be careful with that. When we should be internally present is when we're focusing on somebody else. And by being eternally present, I'm thinking about myself. How can I make myself, or this situation, pleasant for the other person? What what resources do I have? What coaches do I have to make this a meaningful experience, a meaningful interaction? But to, you know, too much, too much self focus is like the magnifying mirror. We'll just faint from it, and it it can actually make a person selfish, it can make a person self ish. And we want to be other-ish. So be present when you do the chesed. Be present with yourself. You're bringing yourself to the to the mitzvah. I'll tell you something else. The Rizal says something fascinating. Fascinating, and this is a really important yisod and el. The Rizal says if a person has a special mitzvah that he feels a special affinity to, for some reason, it says never. Never let loose of it. Hang on to it. Elevate it. Be mahadr in it. I didn't say machmer. Be mahadr in it. Be samer in it. Never let loose of it. You know why, he says? First of all, it's a gravity thing. He says, the mitzvah needs you. The devotion put that affinity for that mitzvah in you because that mitzvah is a ruchnis metzius and miss, it's missing your peace. It's missing your nefesh, your leg. It needs you. Never let it go of it. Be mahadis. So if you have something in Elul that all year long you're particularly fond of, be mahada more in it in Elul. Bring yourself to, to that mitzvah in a mahudadik way, in an excitement of feeling. You'll feel the, the importance of it because the mitzvah tells you a big yishakoya after you've done it. And if you just kind of do it, well, nah, this is the only thing I'm good at. If that's your attitude, then the mitzvah feels disrespected. I came to you specially for this. And you say, well, that's all I have? Like I'm not important? Every mitzvah has in, in the ruchness of kola kula in it. So focusing on your particular mitzvah, your particular uh, strength, that's what we need to work on in Elo. The uh, Rav Riuchim, famous Mashgir from the Mir, said like this, oi to those who don't know their chesreinahs. Oy vavoy to those who don't know their mayas. He's in a bigger sakon and avoid his Hashem than the person who is oblivious to his chusrenas. He knows his mayas, oblivious to his chusrenas. So we call him a balgaiva. But Ibrahim says, Oy vavoy to those who know their chusrenas and don't know their mayas. And the converse is, Ashe mishi yadea his mayas. Because it's with your mayas. You build Oilamas, you build your pinyastic world. It's with your mindless that you connect to others. It's with your personal, your lay, Rahman Liba boy. He wants our heart, each person's heart. When we bring that, our koichas, our, our, our talents, whatever is we, we're strong about, we bring that to the mitzvahs, we bring that to our relationships, we bring that to our tvila. That's the shlemus of Avoidah. 
Okay, let's go. Let's go to the fourth poll, but let's, let's jump into questions, Rabbi Schwartz, because it's getting late and a lot of people want to ask. Okay, um, what does Vahap Larecha love your neighbor as yourself mean to you? Thirty percent of people treating others with the same kindness and respect you. I expect forty-six percent of people feel prioritizing empathy and understanding in all interactions from others, understanding Yenem and being there for Yenem. Only nine percent supporting and helping people in times of need. Fifteen percent cultivating a sense of unity and community amongst people. Seems like most people feel like prioritizing empathy and understanding all interactions. That's the that's the that's the aside the, the understanding from the hat Well, I think everybody everybody's right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's jump but in five questions, Rabbi Schwartz. Let's jump in. Okay. Okay, let's go to the first one. Okay, you're on. Hi, Rabbi Schwartz. Thank you for taking my question. So um, you kind of did touch upon this concept a little bit in your introduction, and um, it's a little bit of a nitty gritty question, but it's a question I had on behalf of Rafa Kamecha for a long, long time. It's the question which I feel is blocking me, the whole Hashkafa concept. And it's the idea of, first of all, you know, when we have different people doing different things and we have people have different standards, humorous, um, at least for me, sometimes I feel like it's hard to balance the idea if I'm keeping to this standard and that person is keeping to that standard, how we could both be right and how I could love him. Like, in my, in my world, that standard is not necessarily whatever. I'm on a different standard. And how, how do I go above that and love the person anyway? Um, especially if there's certain standards that, you know, it's something that G'daylam say, be careful, but others are a little more lenient about it. And the question goes even more further, because I know there's different schools of thought. Like, when there are people who don't, who are not keeping Torah mitzvahs or are doing things that are against Hashem, chas so are we supposed to love them condition unconditionally? Like, where is there a line that we have to stop or it's just... You're supposed to love your friend as yourself, no matter what. Let me let me start with the second part, the, the, the second part of the question. The Torah Devora, the Ramak, that was the Rizal's Rebbe, writes in Sefer Torah Devora, which I highly recommend. Everybody learned their English translations, his commentaries, and there was a Masora in the mirror. That's a Makabu from my Rebbe, Rosh Hashanah that song. That in Elul, everybody learned Torah Devora. Chavala da'avdin. It's a shame that that minhag has somehow fallen and given way to, well, we got to learn Shari uh, Tshuva, which is also important. But term of divorce is exceedingly important, safe, and he writes there about the Rishoyim, loving the Rishoyim. So, of course, we, 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 uh, we have to censor and, and uh, disapprove of what they do. But the Pneumius, the Atzelem Elohim, that we have to love. Mm-hmm. Avram Avinu, says the Nativ, when could you get worse than Sodom Bomara? Can't get worse than that. But when the Rabbi Nishim says he's going to kill them, he's going to wipe out the city, what did the Rabbi Nishim, what did Avraham Avinu say? Cholilo lecho. Kill them? Explains and see if Avraham Avinu was Av Hamoin Goyim. He was the father of humanity. Would a father let somebody kill his son? Nevertheless, says the Nati, he hated them for their bad deeds. But my love does not allow me to let you die. I'm your father. I can't let you die. There's something about everybody, the core of everybody, we have to love because the Rebbe should put them here. And there's something in them. Let me, let me explain it to you. You know, I have... I've had several, several uh, cases, situations in my life, where uh, I was a nirdof. People who had very bad intentions were right of me and very mean and nasty and, and based on Shekin, different ways. So I had a choice then to make. Am I going to hate them? Am I going to ask the Rebbe to take them out of the world? You know, what am I going to gain by it? Am I going to fight them verbally? I'm going to stoop to their means. So I made a decision, which I can testify today, a tremendous toilet. I dive into the Rebbe Nishim, I said, the Nishim, these people, they have a pintal Nagid inside of them. It's, right now, they're buried because of their own Nagiyas. 
There's a Nekudas Ames, a Nekudas of Kedusha. Be more that in them. And the male of the Sheker and the Ra will be misbato. And I could be made that in some of the cases, in all the cases it helped. And in one of, more than one of the cases, in particular, there was a person who was right of me. He was very, very powerful. He was right of me. Everything I was doing for Ta'ala Satsibu. He became like this with me. Wow. He became my biggest ally. So that's the, as far as the second part of the question is concerned. Part of the first part of the question is concerned. It really fits into what we're saying. You know, if I look down upon somebody else because he doesn't meet my standards, that's in Lushan Kodesh called zilzul. It's denigrating. It's disrespecting. How is that Hargosha going to help me be kind of after Ahkumar Kumar that person? So if you don't mind if I just say, like, it, uh, the feeling it brings by me, it brings a feeling of insecurity. So I, I have to keep up to this high standard, whether because the yeshiva taught it or whatever. And I see another person doesn't have to keep up to that standard. So that's where it's, 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 it's obviously... Well, let, 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 me, let, me, let me address so that What, what is the better option to do, to bring ourselves a little bit lower and love the person? No, 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 no. no. First of all, you have to recognize everybody has a different tactics in the world. Everybody has a different area of Avodah Hashem that he's supposed to focus on. Some are doing it. Some are not doing it. Some are not doing it because they've been taught something else that's not really their topic. Some are not doing it because they're neglectful. Some are not doing it because they've been abused and they can't do it. So we have to try and think about what is it about my attitude towards the other person? Where is it coming from? Is it coming from, as you said, my own personal insecurity? Maybe I'm not focusing on what I need to be fo focused on. We can't standardize Yiddishkeit. And that's one of the biggest problems that my, my great Rebbe Rav Obazatzal used to say. What's the area of, in, 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 in Avodah Hashem that we see in Kaiso that has the biggest Yerida? We say there's a Yerida Sadoris. Where's the Yerida Sadoris the worst? He said it's in standardizing. Everybody has to be the same. See, this attitude of looking down upon people because they're different, that's that's still the problem of Bayez Shani. That's, that's the beginning. I'm not saying in your particular case. That's the beginning of hate. That quickly can evolve into hate. Look, look, look what's going on in the world for a moment. Between different groups in Hasidus, different groups in Yeshivas. Reaching Mama Shvichas Domi because you're not on the same standard. Who says we're supposed to be on the same standard? I, I, I don't know where that comes from. It comes from a lack of thinking about the reality is that everybody's different. Everybody has a different tafti. There's 613 mitzvahs. Everybody has his own personal. Says the Rizal. There's Shivim Ponim Latura. Shivim Ponim times 600,000. The Shivim Ponim Latura means the Shivim Ponim Latura. The Torah will call the 613 mitzvahs. The Shivim Ponim to every mitzvah. And it's different for every single year. So we can be mezals on somebody else. And let's say he's doing it because he's neglectful. Baruch Hashem, he has a lot of good avoider that he can do. Baruch Hashem, he's mezakimi with the mitzvah of Klau Godel Batur of Atar despite his chesroinus. I love him. I care about him. He's a person who deserves respect and kiruv. Just like for myself, I deserve respect and kiruv for myself, despite my chesroinus. So it's really very, very important to work in that in El. I would say that's a big avoid in El, is to, to rid ourselves, to reinforce this, uh, uh, the disapproval of a disapproval, to disapprove of any thought which is disapproving of somebody else, of writing people off, because that's the seeds of Sinas Chinam. Not everybody has to be on the same standard. And if everybody's on the same standard, you should take a step back and see, do I really want to be a part of this mass, you know, uh, mass production Yiddishkeit? That's what it is, mass production Yiddishkeit. Everybody's different and respect that and we should love that. And that's why the world, the Rebbe the made the world, everybody, Kishem Shepard Sefeim Menem Doimus, Kach Deo Seim. What does it mean, Deo Seim? Deo is the Lushen connection. The Yoda that says, Odom Yoda is Ishtoi, connected with her. Everybody has a different way of connecting. 
Even somebody who's not from, most of them are not guilty. They were raised not from. Thank you so much. Murray Dick Robert Schwartz. Okay, let's go to the next live question. You're on. Um, okay. Can you hear me? Yep. Um, okay, so I have a question that's pretty basic. Um, probably was asked like a million times, but I was hoping maybe you could give a better answer. Um, I was wondering how Roshana could be also for women. I know they talk a lot about um like you know, you're supposed to do self introspection and all these things. Rosh Hashanah has no meaning for me. Um, I'm busy cooking food up until Rosh Hashanah, and then um, my husband's usually not home. He's our Shire, Um, yeah, I guess. And then my husband's not home for Yantif at all. He flies away, so I'm busy with the kids twenty four seven, and then I'm just counting down the hours till he comes home or till Yantif's over and I could talk to him. I'm definitely not davening. I'm not thinking about anything. I'm doing only mundane things and. Rosh Hashanah has like really no value to me. I know that my husband always says that's not that's my place. This is what I'm supposed to do, and the whole speech. But honestly, like I'm supposed to go through it and feel something. I agree. Uh, I have a suggestion if it's possible. It's not always possible, you know. I can just give broad stroke guidelines. Uh, you need to get some help in the house for Rosh Hashanah, and if it costs money, so your your husband's uh, plane tickets also cost money. And you need to get some time for yourself. If it means going to shul, that's probably a good thing to do. If it means something else for you, time for yourself and connecting with Rosh Hashanah, connecting with the Rabbi Nishan, Uh That's the that's a bigger feel than anything anything else because you can't cook and do all the myriad of other things you're doing if you feel disconnected from the Rabbi Nishan. Right. The thing is also happens to going to shul is not something that would help me. I I don't enjoy davening in shul. I don't. So, um, so do what you enjoy. Go into the forest. Whatever, whatever makes, whatever is meaningful to you. Go into your closet and scream. Whatever it is. But, I'm but you need to have the kids. time. With, you need to have time that you can get away from that. It's not going to happen otherwise. It won't happen on its own. You're overwhelmed. You're overwhelmed. There has to be part of the budget of the whole, of of Rosh Hashanah has to be private time for you to do with it what's meaningful for yourself your your husband is not your shliach tzibur your shutvus each shutvus has his own uh, piece in the shutvus he brings his own money he brings his own koichus is your connection with the bunch is no less important than his so you don't get it through davening fine do whatever whatever way you get it but make sure you do it invest in it Having said that, you know, Rishayev Rish Kerestir, he used to uh, hide and uh, lock himself up in his room on Rosh Hashanah before Tekiyas. Well, Tekiyas Shoifa. Of course, if you see him very uh, interested, curious, what does the Rebbe do? What does the Rebbe do? What does the Rebbe do? You know, was it Kavonis? What was he doing? So, you know, then they had keyholes. You could actually peek through them. So one of the, they, they were, you know, they were pachet from the Rebbe, but uh, one of them finally got up the nerve. And the, uh, peeked through the keyhole. And what did he see? Rabshai, how's he preparing for the kids? He was cutting cakes. He was cutting cakes. So I asked him afterwards, that's a chona for, for, for Tkir Shoifer? He said, look, after after Tkir Shoifer, for Musaf, they made a kiddush, people are hungry. How are they going to daven if they don't have anything to eat? So it's true that whatever you're doing has huge ruchnius impact. Huge! And just imagine for a moment what your house would be like if it was neglected. It sounds like you're a mysterious nefesh. How would your children grow up? How would they be able to connect with their bunch when their mothers let leave them neglected in the home, in an environment, in an atmosphere which is topsy-turvy and is dirty and filthy and, and, and you can't concentrate because nothing has order in it and there's not enough to eat and it's it's not tasty. How healthy would you judge? You're Makayim Oilomas. Olamas of Ruchnias for others. In truth, is you probably have a lot more schar for what you do, and I don't want to say your husband, than what, than what a lot of people, as a Sholem, than what a lot of people do in their diving. Because if you're diving, you're not allowed to think about anything else. You're not allowed to have Hesach Adas. It's just like, say, uh, Salvation says, it's, you know, if you miss out in a in a davening or in a halach or something, all right, yeah, you may miss a certain plot, but 
if your cholent doesn't, t- you know, if you, if you don't put boss in the cholent, it's not cholent. It's, it's a, the ikas chosim in a sefer. To do what you do in the gashmis world, which b'shlemus with lave, is a lomus of ruchnius. It is a lomus of ruchnius. Having said that, you must have time for yourself. You must. It's a must. And this is for all the ladies. All the ladies. Get a babysitter. Get somebody. Or if it takes turns with one of the, the, the other children. Get out of the house. Get out of the, the, the mundane. And do what you, you like to do and what's meaningful for yourself. At least 10 minutes. At least 10 minutes. It doesn't have to be for 12 hours. Um, I just have one more question. Um, a lot of neighbors of mine do get babysitters, but they get non-Jewish nannies. Um, it's very hard to get Jewish people, especially on Yom Kippur, to babysit the kids. And I know it's always looked down upon by a lot of people. And I'm like, you know, people say like, it's better the mother should always be with the kids than have them being watched by non-Jewish people. So I never bothered to even try to find a babysitter because better I should be with them than, you know. Yeah, but it's not uh, that, you know, the kids can get sick of their parents too. You don't have to be 24 seven with your kids. It means your main your, your quality and, and the main part of your time you're with your children. But if you go away for half an hour, an hour, it, it, it's not life and death for the children. And it certainly make a huge difference to you. So you know, if all you can get is a Goyesh, well, make sure they're a kosher Goya, so to speak. Nothing to worry about them. And take the Goya, yeah, and get away, get out of the house. Let's go to the next live question. Hi, sorry, Jan. Oh, hi. Um, I'm enjoying this. Uh, I was, you know, over the past year, at least I've been trying to be more proactive as far as relating to people or doing more, getting more involved in things. But I was concerned about the whole idea of boundaries. I mean, I, I would resent feeling like somebody's pet mitzvah. And I don't know, like, <laughs> you know, no, you know, like, think like, oh, this person may, you know, might need help, but, or empathy, you know, whatever, but to what extent, you know, should there, I don't know, should there be some kind of restraint or boundaries? How do you avoid maybe going a little too far, so to speak, like what the person may really need or require? Yeah, you, you know, got to really think about it. Ego. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't want to do just my own ego either, you know. Right. That's yeah, one of the mitzvahs they say, after Ahmed is one of the mitzvahs they say, if you do it, only the same Shemayim, you're not Mekayim. So, you have to do the same Yenim. What does he need? What's going to make him feel good? Yeah. What if you guys realize maybe you're not the right person for it? So I mean, then get somebody else to do it as a fulfillment oh. of after Ahmed because you want him to feel good and to get the most benefit. So it's like boundaries both ways. I mean, he has his or she, in my, my case. Respect boundaries. Respect yeah. his boundaries. Mm-hmm. You have to do the lefiha makabo. When the Bersham gave the Torah, he didn't give it everyone in the same way. Everybody got lefi koho. You have to spend some time thinking about that person. What is, what is, what is his klikibo? What, what is it about his nature and yeah. his personality? That's going to resonate with what I want to help him with. Yeah. But at the same time, know your limits, I guess. I mean, I, what? but not, you know, maybe know your own, you know, your own limits, but not feel guilty if you're not able to really uh, reach out to that person or affect them. Or right. Maybe you're right. not the right person. Uh, maybe what he needs is a, a $10,000 loan and you don't have it. Yeah. So see what you can do to get it for him. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But how to avoid feeling like, you know, like I said, a pet it's, you know, some things that may not, it may not be my business to, you know, tell somebody as, 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 something as, pa- wrong. Don't be patronizing. Be yeah. other-focused, not self-focused. Okay. It's, it's a balancing act. <laughs> uh, it's not, it's not yeah. so, no, I, yeah. I, it's not yeah. so much a balancing act. It's, it's, what are you focusing on? Am I focusing on my pet mitzvah? Yeah. Or my focus on making that person feel better, have what he needs, that has to be the whole focus. It happens to be, that's a really big mitzvah to do this. It happens to be, I really like doing this mitzvah, but that's not the reason I'm doing it. That's called self-like. Oh. It says, we have to live First, he comes first. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Here, Abba Schwartz. Here we go. More. You're on next. Yeah, hi. Um, sometimes when I'm going through a hard time with something and there's something 
pressing on me, something weighing me down. I naturally go more to formal davening because I want to find relief by davening about it. And then when life goes smoothly, um, um, I just don't go to davening so much. I'm more engaged in my everyday life. Maybe I do more for my family, for others, but I don't go to the davening more. So there's always this underlying fear that maybe Hashem is going to take the smoothness away from me because he wants me to daven more. Is there any point to, that I should push myself to daven the same when things go well as when things don't go so well? Well, you're the same as every single year that's uh, listening to this, including myself. <laughs> it's completely natural that what, uh, when a person's bitzar, in fact, the Rambam says that the main myths of davening is when you're in need. When we're not in need, we, we, we're we not as mechuyiv in davening as when we're in need. The reality is we're in need every second. And the things that we take for granted when things are going smoothly, they're really, they're, they're bequeathed to us every moment. They're not given. We should feel as much in need for what is smooth and going orderly and according to the way that I like it. We should feel in, as much in need for that as the things which we don't have presently. I know that I should, but I don't. I mean, well, that's, I think that's how everyone. So is. you count your blessings. Take take some time. Count your blessings. Things are going right, and then the next step is thank you, Hashem. The next step is that just say to Hashem, "I know this is not, uh, it's, you know, it's not move on my love. How do you say move on my love? It's not self understood. It doesn't have to be like this. You're gifting this to me every moment." Every moment, you're not just giving me one-time thing when I need it. You're giving me my health right now. You're giving me my nachas right now. Just thank Hashem. That's tefillah. Thank Hashem for it. That is the greatest tefillah is hoido, is thanks to Hashem. We should always thank Hashem for what happened. And daven that it should continue. Of course, it's thanking not with Hashem, the same passion. I, thanking Hashem, I do, like, as the day goes on, as I do my work, I just keep on That's thanking Hashem. Tefillah. But it's That's not beautiful. the formal davening that I do when you, things don't go so well. It's probably does more in Shemayim than your formal davening. Mm -hmm. When it's from the heart, Rachmona Liba Boy. One word from your heart is worth 10,000 words not from the heart. Okay, thank you. Okay, the next one, you're on. Hello. Um, first of all, Rabbi, thank you for being here. Uh, it's been tremendously enlightening. I really appreciate it. I'm sure we all do. Um, I had actually two groups of questions, but after hearing the shear, uh, one of the questions kinds of falls apart, falls away, because um, I recognize it being more um, understanding and patience with others and thinking of uh, their needs will be something that would, for instance, stop me from uh, getting distracted by them blowing their nose out loud or <laughs> coughing. Uh, you know how when you have a, a a group of horses in the stall and then one of them sneezes and then they all start sneezing one after the other. And you'll notice like the first three minutes of a Shimon Esri are dead quiet. And then moment one person coughs, then everybody in the place is coughing. Um, but... Uh, Needless to say, I have a, my other question. Huh, my other question: what what strategies are most helpful to stay focused on positive thoughts and opinions of ourselves while we're davening or going through Elul and Rosh Hashanah, even though we do know we have a lot of work to do to work on, and sometimes some of us have even committed a various chamuros. So how do we answer the Yetzirah when he presents us with incentives to be Miyayish? Okay, let me just, uh, maybe this will deal with the question. There is no room for Cheshvan and Nefesh on Rosh Hashanah. Yeah. There's no veto. Right. We should not be thinking about our Chisrenas or our Veras. Even when we say, Avinu Malkeinu Chotonu Lefanecho, the Mishaburah is Tereach to be Mazber, according to the posting. Avinu Malkeinu Chotonu, means our Forefathers were choite, and unfortunately, were there were there yorshim. But person not allowed to say the word chet. You're not allowed to 
where the meaning is not to eat grapes because the gematria echet, because uh, the gematria echet, we keep a, a, a long distance away from any machshava maisim which connected with a virus. That's not what Rosh Hashanah is about. Rosh Hashanah is about to be mamlich a Kodesh Baruch I'm glad you asked the question. We are to be make a Kodesh Baruch the Melech on Rosh Hashanah. How do we do that? So the Be'ika, we do it in Tekiya Shoifah. But let me s- explain it in broader terms. And the Kol Zeachmi's Bekavokim, it's included in Tekiya Shoifah. The Midrash says, no, imagine for, for a moment, let's say, you know, you have unlimited resources. You've got cash galore. And you love the water. You want a waterfront piece of property. You want to live by the water. But really, you it's not enough. A lot of people live near the water. I want to live on the water. I want a house on the water. All right, that's a difficult thing to do. So you go get a special engineer and a special architect, and he comes up with a design how you can have your house floating on the water. It's two, let's say, pontoon boats, and on top of them is a foundation that spans the two boats. You have to have some flexibility there, right? Because the water is moving all the time. And you can build a house on top of that foundation. But they have to be working completely in unison. The two captains of the ships, of the boats on the sides, have to be completely connected 24-7. And nobody can make unilateral moves. Because even if one moves, the house falls into the ground. And even if one of those captains, he is having a discussion with the other captains, and they disagree on where to turn and how to navigate the waves. And he's this, this captain, he's 100% sure he has a thousand proofs that he's right. He still cannot make a unilateral move. Because if he does, the house goes into the ground, goes into the water, sinks. So too, the Midrash says that Rabban Shem is Melech, and he built his palace, a mushal, in a way that spans two boats. And as long as those boats are connected together, as the palace stands. It's 11 o'clock. When we're, when we're connected, when we're ba'achtus, that is the foundation for Mamleches Hashem, for the Malchus Hashem to be revealed in the world. And that's why when there's sinus chinim, when the separation, the ships separate, the house falls down, the palace falls into the water. Roshon is the time to preserve, cultivate, the Achtus, that guy sneezing and the, the, with, you know, making the noise with his throat in the middle of davening, he's helping you. He's helping you stop for a moment and refocus on your davening. Any machshova which separates us from another Yid on Rosh Hashanah, that's what we need to worry about. No chatoin, no avelis, nothing. Only Malchus Hashem. Hashem wants us to be together. By he be shulum melech, be when the Roshe Om are all together, <laughs> anyway, Roshe Om, Nazmi, Natik Tanim, everybody else also, everybody has to be together, especially on Rosh Hashanah. And all those disturbances that come in the middle, and that's true of the whole year also, are there to help me. Thank you for that. The, uh, my question, I understand that on, 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 it's not Nogeya directly for Rosh Hashanah, but in the preparation for Rosh Hashanah, and Elul, and Cyrus Mechuba and even Yom Kippur, when the Yet Sahara comes and attacks you with a with with goals to be Miyayish rather than work on one's Aveda, how do you Rabbi answer? Salanter says, Ain machlo machlo It's an Aveda, like the reason the reason the Yet Sahara works in a lot of ways, a lot of very we have to realize Yush comes from Asa. This go do something that makes you feel good about yourself. That's your avoid it then. Hesachadas. Yush is directly from the Sotan, directly from the Yetzirah. Nobody ever accomplished anything, anything from Yush. Okay, thank you. Beautiful. Okay, um, I'm going to go through a question that somebody sent in. And basically, it goes back to the Yisoy that you're talking about. So the question is, this younger man is working on Musr and Cheshman Nefesh. He's doing the avoid of El that he's used to. So he wants to understand what, what is the avoid, and especially what you were saying in the beginning. It sounds a little different than what he grew up with. Um, Cheshman Nefesh, with um, maybe some Toichecha, uh, some Musr, like you said, magnifying glass to clean yourself. 
So how do we understand both sides? Okay, this goes back to my opening remarks. This whole discussion takes people, can take people a little bit out of their comfort zone. I, I want to reveal something, you know, publicly. You know, this topic is really a hot potato in the from world. In fact, I wrote an article on it, which Nahum, you read it, Osher read the article, uh, about Sinaskinim and about the Dessler paradox. And there's not one from publication was willing to publish it. Not one. So I don't, I don't know if, you know, we have to view everything that we received from the classic approaches in, in the yeshivas and the, the mashpim. I don't Manach, know if that's... Manach, I'm after the shir, I'm going to take the article and email it to all... People want to read it now. We're going to, we're going to email it to all 20,000 email people, so they're all going to read it. I, I, I look, let, let me pre preface it like this. The Vilna Gon writes in his Pirush Antikune Zohar that every, every generation has different manhigim. And the reason for that is that there's a different Rotsan Hashem in Hanhogas Hashem, Manashkochas Hashem, for every generation. And the gross is even more than that. The gross is in, every, in everybody's particular life as a Yochi. There's different periods in life also. When the Rebunshim's desire, Kibyochel, his Rotson, the direction that he wants to send us in changes, and they're all true at their given times. If you daven Musaf on Monday, it's a chet. If you daven Ma'arov uh, Yarovim in Shachris, you missed out. There's different times, different on August, with different duras. So it changes every every generation, and within every generation, it changes. Also today, maybe every year, it changes. Also, the what Hashem wants from us, and I can say without we don't have time to go into all the sources. What the Rebbeinu wants from us in this generation is to fix the reason why we're still in Golos sinas chinam. And the only way to fix sinas chinam is And all of our avodas Hashem should filter through that. In any way that it, what I'm doing interferes with I'm continuing the goalless. If I, because of what I'm doing in avodas Hashem, I'm looking down at other people. I'm separating from communities. I'm separating between people. I'm causing strife. I'm creating disappointment. I'm creating a sadness. I'm doing the wrong thing. Maybe I'm doing the right thing, but how I'm doing it is wrong. In this generation, the Bershom wants to rebuild. It's, we're, look, we're getting close to the end. There's only Shis al Fishnin, Hai Almo. There's only 6,000 years in the world. We're almost at the end. We have to fix Sinas Chinam before that. And the fixing of Sinas Chinam is the Ahavta Lereyacho. So this is the Desler paradox, right? We have to put all of our focus on that. How does everything I do filter in, into that? Do I change something in what I'm doing because of that? Maybe. Maybe just the way I do it. For that, you need a Rebbe to discuss it with him. So yeah, we can learn Musa and we can make Cheshvan and Nefesh, but it all has to be Be'avo. How does this help me become a better Oyev Yisroel? Because if it doesn't, if it doesn't create more actors, if it creates more separation or more jealousy or more anger or more dissatisfaction or more disapproval, it's not worth it. It's like the altar told that that Bocher, so the, your beautiful Hanhoga of Kabbalah Shabbos, what's it worth when it brings you to Gaiva? Hefe So, So for beginners... Uh, in Adam Lachaveroi, it's understood, people can understand that we have to work on um, making sure that we get closer. In Adam Lamakim, for beginners, where do we start working? Tomer Devora. There's no, it's a false distinction. Bein Adam Lachaver and Bein Adam Lamakim is a false distinction. They're all Bein Adam Lachaver and they're all Bein Adam Lamakim. Sefer Tomer Devora. Learn it with a pirush. Go slowly. He shows in every step of the way how the two are connected and how lemaisa you carry it out. That's why they learned it in Elul. I don't know when it stopped. 
Beautiful. Okay, go out. Let's go to the next live question. Here we go. Hold on one second. Okay, I'm mute. Hi. 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 So um, I had a question about I'm someone that I'm very non judgmental and I love everyone, which again, I'm not I'm not perfect, but in this area. Give I the Tibor a brocha right now. <laughs> everyone should be convinced with whatever they want. I'm happy, I'm happy with life. I, again, I can't say I, I can't say for everyone, but I'm saying I am a positive person. And I do. Um, I'm trusting. So it's a good thing. But then I've had a lot of times where um, my loved ones would tell me, like, I don't think this person is good for you. I think not necessarily like that I'm being taken advantage of, but like maybe I'm loving people that shouldn't be in my life. Um, so how do you balance that? And uh, how could I protect myself while being so open and trusting of everyone around me? A good understanding friend. Discuss when you when you have things like that that come up, you need a really good friend who is understanding, who can give you his his outlook on it. Mm -hmm. Okay. That makes sense. Okay, that answers it. Thank you. Okay, let's go to the next question over here. I'm going to ask you a question over here. Somebody just sent it. Another minute, second. Somebody's writing over there. They're a little bit understanding that that the main issue that presents the bait, the sin is chinam, right? Is centered around the principle of the haftal recha kumaycha. It'd be more helpful to clarify the primary focus of the concern you're addressing. What's what's the ikr you're talking about, Ben Adam Khaber? Be more specific. Well, the very basic, on the very basic, of course, it's Dwarn Shain Lam Shio. After Akhamoka is Dwarn Shain Lam just like we have no limit how much we can and should love ourselves to, to want for our own benefit. So too we should develop that. And that takes a lot, a lot of work for, towards others. But let's talk at the basic level. The basic level is like the Gro explains and the Natsib explains it. Uh, the grow on the safer moon of Ashkoch, I think it's called, and then it's even the uh, beginning of safer Breshis, that after Achkemoch comes into play when we see or experience somebody who's different than us. If we, you know, get along very well with people who are the same as us, that's self love. It's those who are different than us that trigger us into suspicion into fear, disapproval, whole gamut of emotions and feelings that it can arouse, into machlokas. So that's the first thing, is we have to recognize that every difference we see in Yidin is the heichatims, is the basis for being mekayim, the mitzvah of It's a different way of looking at differences. They're different because I have to become a better person. They're different, as far as I'm concerned, it's not my job to change them. It's my job to change me. So if they're different and I disapprove, I have to work on that sense of el yoinus, of being better than others, of isnasus. I have to work on my gaiva. Or if I'm angry, I have to work on kas. If I'm jealous, I have to work on jealousy. They're all opportunities to make help me become a bigger oyev, a bigger oyev Hashem. That's what differences are about. But when you disapprove of somebody because of their differences, and we have to recognize that that's what it's from, when we disapprove of them, disapproval turns very quickly into hate, to disdain, to rejection. When that happens, we're over on the biggest fundamental of the Torah, which is after Ahakamoyko. And that's why it's called Sinas Chino. Why is it Chino? So the girl explains the reason why it's chinam is because you hate him, not because you really know what's going on with him. It's because he's different. You hate him. You, you hate to him. Your feelings of hate towards him are, 
were generated because he's different. And the reason he's different, as far as I'm concerned, is to help me refine my attitude to other people, to the Mekayim Mitzvah after Afa Kamoichel. So if you hate because of difference, that's Bechinam. Somebody said, you know why it's called Sinas Chinam? You know, Chinam in, in modern Hebrew means for free. Somebody said, why are we so uh, uh, falling all the time in Sinas Chinam? It's because it's free. But it's, it's called Bechinam means for not. If we hate because of differences, if we disapprove because of differences, we have to reframe it and say, this person is different because he's giving me an opportunity to reach a level of acceptance with, of respect. I don't know what's going on in this person's life. I don't know what brought him to this point. Either he was deprived or abused, one of the two. Now, how can I give him a hug and say, let me tell you a story. I had a chavrusa, a beautiful story. I had a chavrusa. Yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, over six, a little over six feet tall, and he's like really, really short. But the difference between the two of us, besides being my great Kavrusa, was he had a black belt in karate. A black belt in karate when he was young, got into karate. I guess maybe his, his parents thought he needed it for so he could focus his attention, whatever. But he became very good in the background. To retain your black belt in karate, you have to re, I don't know, retrain or reapply every, I don't know, five, ten years, whatever it is. Because at different age groups, they got to see that you're still there. And that, Anyway, this friend of mine who was in his 50s already, he keeps up his black belt. And so he went to the black belt retraining or requalification session, which is somewhere in the northern part of Israel. And he's practicing his stuff. And a bunch of punks, you know, people come to watch black belts. Everybody, there's a black belt. So it's interesting. A bunch of punks, Israeli punks, you know, 18-year-olds, whatever. And they see this from guy with the beard and he's short and he's just got to get gray hairs in it. Hey, Rebbe, hey, Rebbe, you know, come, come, you know, show us what you can do. So they were taunting him uh, and they wouldn't even know. He tried to ignore him and it kept going on. So finally he said, okay, you know what? Let me show you what I can do. One of you come step in the middle to the circle here. Let me show you what I can do. <laughs> so... Of course, they're punks, and they have. There's besides being chutzpahdik, they're stupid. So one of them volunteers and comes right in front of him. Comes to the center of the circle, right in front of him. And my friend sticks out his hands, grabs his head, brings it to him, and he gives him a big kiss and a hug. Everybody melted away. Everybody melted away. People are different. Sometimes you people who are are chutzpahdik and nasty. There's a way to connect with him. And Ahava breeds Ahava. That's its nature. Ahava mekalkeles is Ashura. It breaks down barriers. It can never be done with Dina and, and, and anger, for sure not. Dina is a barrier. The, we, we need Dina sometimes, but the Rebbe wants in our generation to break apart that Big stone is sitting upon us of sin and That's the last thing we have left. That's it. We're very good in Shmir Salocha. We're very good in Limatar, just like we were in Bayashani. And we're really good in Sin and too. And that's what we have to get rid of. I'm not saying the other stuff is not important. We should have more Limatar, more Yeshivas, more Kodalim, and more hours of Limatar, and Davening, and Musa, and everything. But all, as long as it fits into the agenda of. Here's a question that somebody sent in. Number one, first, getting influenced from from Eden that are not on your level. Or we spoke a little bit about it, but if you have shaykhs to Eden not on your level, and the question that a lot a lot of people want to ask when somebody has a child that goes off or show signs of struggling. And we know, and we've heard many times of accepting, but before that acceptance, you know, you still want to make sure they're, you know, you're hoping that you'll be able to give a little bit of or tell them you shouldn't, you allow to, what's, you know, what's the, the, the guidance in that case, in those cases? Okay, so um, that's really a topic of... Uh... Kesher Nafshi, it's very complex, it's very delicate, um, so I don't want to address it in any particular way, but just one thing you said I do want to address. Tolcheicho 
we know Chazanish writes, and like the Posik says, Lo siso the purpose of Tochecho is to show the person how what they did wrong is really wrong, and so they can correct it. But it has to be Tochecho that that's not Lo siso that doesn't cause them to do Chet. If you give Tochecho in a way which causes them to get worse, not only, listen carefully to what I'm saying now, if you give Tochecho in the wrong way, so that it helps it, that it facilitates him retaining chet or getting worse, you're over on a big avera. Not only you're not mekayim the mitzvah tochecho, but you're like what the Gemara says that also lo adam lahakos es bnei agodol. You're not allowed to hit a, a child who's already not a cotton anymore because it's lifnei iver lo isitein michshol. If you give tochecho in a way which exacerbates the situation, you're over on loisiten, uh, and you're going to bear some of the yoke of the punishment of the chet that he does now because of your tochech. Now the Chazanish says, there's nobody today who knows how to do that. Because tochech has to be from love. And even if we think we know it from love, but we don't know how to do it. It's, tochech has to come from a feeling of love, and it's an art how to do it in a way you don't know how the person's going to uh, translate the way you're talking, what you're saying, how you're looking at it. You don't know how, we don't know how to do it. So we're all potter. We're all potter from Tachecha. I don't think there's one parent who still in the, has children at the age where he's raising them who really can do that. Ba'avu. Completely ba'avu. I don't know if there's any rebellion left. Because he says nobody knows how to do it anymore. So a potter. So number one, why do it if you're potter? Number two, if you do do it, and it will make the situation worse, you over on a bigger Vera. So have a, a more year of Shemayim from your own Vera than from your child's Vera. That's why it says in Pirk Ovis, Yiras Chet Oi. You have to worry about your Chet. His Chet is his Cheshman with the Rabbi Nishlam. More than that, I can't say you got to come to a Kesher Nafshi conference or look at the uh, at everything that's there on the uh, the website, all the different uh, Shuim and Droshas. Okay, every look. father who said the bar mitzvah should be repeated every day. It's not my responsibility. Since I don't know how to do Tochecho, and I'm not responsible for him anymore, back off. Back off. You, if you there's one small chance you're going to make things worse, and it's not a small chance. It'll vade make things worse. You're doing a chet, not a mitzvah. Th- that's a general. I'm not giving specific instructions. For that, you need to... Uh, the Bush and Melissa, you got to come to get an option. Masking. Masking. Okay, let's go to this question on the phone. You're on. Yeah. Thank you, Usher. Thank you, Menachem, for having this program. Thank you for bringing on people like Ray Schwartz. Um, when I got the flyer, I thought the program would be a bit different. So I take the leans to maybe um, change topics or drop in the Sigi of L. Many people that are struggling with hardships in life, mental health, or anything under the categories of those, a big part of it's accepting um, their relationship with Hashem, accepting themselves for who they are, and not sitting there and judging themselves like they've done in the past. How does that work with the fact that we know there's din, there's malchus, sometimes even get people in situations upset like you know Hashem your malachas in the world now this is what happened to us how do we approach that um through the lens of pain and suffering let, let me uh, make sure I understand the question that how do we make Hashem Melech which uh, would seem to convey the idea that he's in control of everything uh vis-a-vis my personal pain that seems to come from places which seem like hefkeles. There was, where's the malchus in my life that could have protected me from the pain that I have? Is that what you mean? Yes, and also the concept of din, of having a judgment on a person. <laughs> okay, it's a big, big topic, but let me just say the following. The shorish of din, 
the root of din is chesed. Without boundaries, without limitations, without obstacles, which are like mechitzas, we can't grow. There's no purpose in life then. If everything is a shefa of chesed, just we're drowning in chesed, like the Ramban says on Yom Kippur, it's a yam of racham, a sea of mercy, the day of Yom Kippur. We're showing, tzaddikim, benim, everybody gets the same, everybody's singing and dancing, everybody is happy. Nobody has any purpose in life. So the shorish of din, that not everybody has what he wants, that there are obstacles in life, that are things which force us to change course, is the biggest chesed possible. On top of that, din is, is designed in a way that it's specific for me. What is my purpose in the world? How am I supposed to be Mamel Hashem? Based on the things I did in previous Gilgulim, we cannot ignore that. Like the Groh explains, the Rizal Barichas, the Groh explains, it, adopts this, this point of view also, that the, the obstacles we have in this world, the ones that are built into my life that I could do nothing about, they're all part of the Hashloma, of perfecting what we didn't get right in previous Gilgulim. So it's a chesed, it's a huge chesed when a person has, we're not looking for pain, but when it comes, there's something in it for me, in that pain, to work out how to overcome this pain, how to deal with it, how to relate to it, to myself, to others while I'm in pain. There's a myriad of things a person can do with pain. But one thing is for sure, dealing with it with emuna is my tachis. And the Rebbeim gave it specifically, like the Gemara says, "Chavivim Yisurim." We don't want this Yisurim, but when they come, if they come, we have to say, "Chavivim Yisurim." Thank you, Rebbeim Shloilam, for these Yisurim, for this pain, for this obstacle, because now I know what I need to work on to make myself more sholem, to fix up what I didn't fix up till now. Thank you. I thank you. Like it says in Shulchan Aruch, a person should be able to say all the time, everything is for the good. When a person does that, explains the, the Ben Yoyoda on that Gemara, every time you say that and you mean it with your heart, you take off part of the deen. So what did I accomplish? I accomplished that, it's called Hamtoka Sadin. I accomplished that I thank Hashem where the deen comes from, that is for the good, then the deen is already accomplished its purpose, that it brought you a bigger connection with the Rabbi Nishalayim. That's a regular ha, said we could do a whole session just on this. Bring it back to where it came from. You know, on the envelope or the package says, uh, you know, if, if not deliverables, give it back to the sender, you know, send it back to the sender. It says, no, that's the delivery. Give it back to the sender. Bring it back. Reconnect. Where did it come from? It's not Hefke. It's not an accident. It's to help me become more shalom. It hurts. Of course it hurts. Once I was, I get loyal, you know, often uh, on, you know, rose, you know, uh, cellulitis. I was in the emergency room. My foot was like a, like a, like a watermelon. So the uh, doctor says, you know, we're going to have to open this up. Cut it open. I said, you're going to give me some uh, anesthetic first, right? That just cutting my foot with a knife. He said, no. Uh, it's the same pain. Why should I give you that? I said, you know what? You're working on my foot. And if I'm going to have a knee-jerk reaction to the pain, it says, I might, you know, kick you or something and, and shoot my foot, might get shot into the knife. Maybe get somebody else to help hold down my leg. And he said, you know what? No pain, no gain. Nobody's going to hold your leg better than you. It's mine. He said, you know what? The pain is yours. You deal with it. And I did. Baruch Shem, it actually helped the pain because my foot was all so inflamed. But that's what we need to do with pain. He says, you sent it to me. It's my pain. You sent it for me, not against me. Uh -huh. And the, the concept of din, meaning, and what about how do you deal with that? You're getting judged. Like, what did I do wrong? I know I tried. I tried to survive. 
how well you know it's a whole like i said we could do a whole session on this but what would the world like what would the world be like what would my life be like if i was never held accountable for anything i did um probably not a good place that's that's not a good place right so that's you know in broad strokes that's the answer to your question it's chesed it's chesed that does din cheshbon what about a company that doesn't p- p- produce for their financials for 10 years? What are their investors going to say after 10 years they find out that they're bankrupt? You didn't give a team to Cheshman. Okay. Thank you. It's good. Chesed. Din is Chesed. Thank you for answering. Yeah, all the garbage works. Okay. So many people want to ask questions. Okay, you're on. Hi. I'm wondering how it's possible to forgive um, when you're dealing with someone who affected your life in a way that it still affects your life every day. That's the hardest question of the night. That's the hardest question of the night. We have to dig very, 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 very deep. First of all, I want to say something. There are certain things you don't have to forgive. Like we say in the Tefillah Zako, if a person owes you money and he's not paying, cause you financial harm, you don't have to forgive that. Um, if it's Pagam Mishpocha, somebody tainted your rep- reputation of your family, your lineage of your family, you don't have to be mad on that. But usually it's insult. Sometimes it's deep insult. Um, sometimes it's emotional harm. The person hurt you so deeply that it affected you emotionally and mainly your ability to function normally. So the, the, the highest order of priority, the highest order of priority is not necessarily mechila of forgiving. The highest order of in priorities is to heal yourself from the emotional havoc that that insult caused you. I think that has to be very, very, that has to be at the top of the list. And you can't really deal with mechila, with forgiveness, until you can put some order into your own life. Part of putting order into your own life, assuming that they've caused such huge pain that they've changed your life for the worst. Now you're, you're handicapped or you can't deal with it or you cause pain to, through that, you cause pain to other people. Uh, the, the key to dealing with it is to find out how I internally I can heal myself. That but how do I reconcile that with... Well, let, let me finish. When a person, uh, part of that process is acceptance. But this also it didn't happen. It wasn't Hefka. The gross is also seen as Chinah means person thinks that uh, he got the maka, he got a, a patch, and he thinks it just happened, and he he hates the person who did it to him. It says the Loshava Makeu, Pasuk in Mishlei. It says that the Rebbeinu if he didn't allow this to happen, if it wasn't part of the decree that you should get hurt by this person, it would not have happened. Rebbeinu could have protected you. So part of the process is a strengthening of Amuna that is not Hefker, that's not an accident, that's part of your taklis in the world. It's a struggle with making sense and healing yourself from the pain. It's directed from Mina Shamayim. The Benjamin could have protected you from that person, anything he said or did. And he didn't. Because you had to reach a place, and in that place alone, you can be kind your taklis. So a big part of this is working on the Muna. The second big part of it is accepting and thanking Hashem. Gamzu l'toiva. I don't see you out l'toiva. I believe it's l'toiva. Please, Hashem Yisbaro, thank you so much. I hope you will show me how this is really true, how it's really l'toiva in the very near future. And every time you say it, you mechazik yourself and you bring benefit to yourself by saying gamzu l'toiva, you help lighten the burden of what you're suffering from. After you've gone through that process for a significant amount of time and the quality of the work, 
you can begin to address the issue of mechila. Until then, there's no, there's no room to talk about forgiveness. Let's say a person, has to show him as a, you know, he's in a bad medical situation and they have to cut him while, without, like I was in, I had to cut you without the, uh, the uh, anesthesia. It says, while you're experiencing the pain, you're going to say, I'm Michael, you, I'm Michael, I'm Michael. This is a tipish. And I think I'll bring in the psychiatric ward. You scream from pain when you're in pain. So it's dealing productively with the Muna and Bitochen and the nuts and bolts of dealing with the pain. Sometimes it requires a, a therapist, a good, good person like a Menachem or somebody. Uh, when you start getting a handle on it, then you can go deeper into the area of Mechila. And then in the meantime, say for Tom Redvora, certainly, yeah, but let me, let me, the first chapter, Tom Redvora, is all about doing good for those who do not deserve it. Edith Pirusha Zilgamor. So, yeah, we can say with the Muna, I'm going to be Michael the person, and I'm going to do good for the person when I can, when and if I can. In the meantime, I'm going to dive into the version. He shows, shows me the light, how to deal with my pain, how this will bring benefit for myself. And eventually I'll come to a, a Muna, a Mechila be Muna Shlema. But uh, you can't uh, put the cart before the horses. The person, the Chavis says, is not a Mala. We're not angels. We're not like, you know, autopilots. We're not like... A, what is AI, artificial intelligence? Just be moichel. Person's not a mala. We've got to work it out. We've got to work out the pain, and then we can be moichel. It doesn't even help, or even social answers. If you're moichel person, you don't feel it in your heart. It's worthless. Somebody recently was, you know, unintentionally, but it, it was it, it's because he had too much, he was too self-centered. He was pagan. So he asked for mechila. So I said, no. I'm not going to be Michael you now because it's worthless. It's worthless for me to be because I don't really feel it yet. I said, come back before Yom Kippur and I'll be Michael you. Give me time to work on it. And this is the case also when someone did uh, like Mamay Nor Pagan Mishbaha, like this should also be the Derach. Is that like the place where that I, I think it, it? I think that really needs to be discussed privately. You're welcome to. Uh, Text about WhatsApp or whatever to me about the protein, but gamish bochel is a different story, as I said. Gamish bochel is not necessarily something you you have to be mindful on, but it needs a lot more protein, more details to be able to answer that question. Which you're welcome to. You're welcome to uh, approach me uh, privately. I don't think it should be discussed uh, very often. Thank you very much. Okay, Reverend Schwartz. One last Reverend Schwartz. One last question for the night. You're on. Okay, thank you, thank you. Question. So I'm listening to what you're saying, that Hashem gives pain and Hashem gives difficulties to be a kapara for Avinus for now. Kapara I didn't say that. Okay. <laughs> I did not say that. Okay, that's why I had a question. That's what I thought okay. I had. Or for things no. that we did in the last Gilgal, to straighten things we, up. We are close, and we come into this world lacking perfection. Because of things we did in the previous Gilgal, and the Rebbeinu gives us an opportunity to be mashlim that chisor. Well, what about that? Hashem sometimes gives us pain or nasiyanis just to give us the opportunity for more schosim. You mean like the uh, akeda, um, uh, where he didn't reveal to him where, where and when exactly it's going to take place? What's so he gave him schar in every psia and psia? Is that what you mean? Any part of any Nisayan Hashem gives us, maybe it's just to get me to connect to Hashem more, to grow in my avayda, to believe in Hashem. Does it only have to be to fix it? Oh, oh, I see what you're asking. No, no, it doesn't have to be. You're right. It could be if a person's a tzaddik gomor and he has nothing, no uh, left unpaid, no unpaid bills left over from previous gogogim, then yes, it could be. Because to think that everything we're going through is only to fix up from the past, that's a heavy package to carry. At least if I yeah. think I'm getting more schosen. I don't know. If a, person, if a person was bankrupt and somebody came and gave him, listen, I'll make you a, a financial package and you can get out of it. It's, you have to be very disciplined and focused over the next 10 years, but you'll get out of, 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 of financial bankruptcy. It'd be hard, but you'd be happy that you have a, you have a plan now. 
but we're not bankrupt because let me let me explain something else about Gilgul. This is not the uh, venue to talk about Gilgul. It says all the parts of us that we've been mashling from previous Gilgul, they don't have to come back again. That's the, the, they're safe in a safe. And the and the safe in Ayla Mayemis and Miss Anik Al Hashem Al Zivshkinosa and the parts that are still missing, we we just enhance that when we when we finish that that job. It's not that we're all tainted, that we're all we have lot of parts of us that are that are good and 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 need no tikkun at all. But Hashem is uh Ratzakur's he, he wants us to come and enjoy every single aspect of Shlemus when we get to Eilam Ma'amas. Not to leave one piece out. To miss one piece of Eilam Ma'amas that we could have had is a, is a Hefzid Merubah. And it's the eternal Hefzid. It's all the Tevaseinu. We shouldn't feel it as if we're carrying a burden with us. We're carrying an opportunity with us to increase our wealth, which already exists. And we're just adding interest on top of interest to ourselves. It's for us. It's not for the Rebbein It's for us. The Rebbein wants us to, to, to be Shalom so we can have the ultimate, the pinnacle of Tanag and Oilam I don't know if that helps, but that's what you need to work on accepting. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Okay, give all the grab Schwartz. Let's go to closing, okay? First of all, thank for Yitzhak Schwartz for coming on, waking up so early in the morning. He's still probably a Stavon Shachris. He has a whole day ahead of him. We're going to sleep, but a great Yitzhak tremendous chizik before Shoshana. We really touched on a lot of deep topics. Um, thank you for coming on. Again, tonight, she is supposed to say my father. I should be on the David Shmuel, the Neshama Shavon Aliyah. Should be a big refuge for, for Gili Bas Bat Tiki, who's a very special woman. Has some friends that really love her. That she should have refuge for and Bikar from all the thousands of people in the that will listen to this. And again, if anybody wants to join our WhatsApp chats, just WhatsApp me at 848-525-0066 and save my number. I'll send you the flyers every Sunday from the speakers. If you want to go to menachembarenfall.com, sign up for his emails with all the information. But Menachem is going to send out the email with the PDF from Rabbi Schwartz. I, I put it on the chat. Anybody clicked on it? But Menachem will email the actual PDF of that article that you wrote, and then Menachem will be able to read it. And if you get anybody who's here the first time, every Sunday night on the Zoom ID, we have different topics and tremendous people that come on. Menachem, next week, we're going to have an amazing share with Matis Miller, big therapist here in Lakewood, that's going to be discussing enmeshment, codependency, a very deep topic and in raising children and as they turn into adults. And it's going to be in a more therapeutic uh Type of tone, and he's from the best of the best. So please join us. It should be very meaningful. Let people know about it. Again, everything will be recorded on the show. will be on menachembermanfall.com. If anybody has any questions, you can email coachmanachem at gmail.com. Again, tonight's share is 155. Make sure you can call and listen on the phone as well at 848 777 GROW. That's 848 777 4769. It's also, of course, on YouTube, on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Call Lushan, and 100 other places. Rabbi Schwartz, people are texting me. They want to know how do they reach Rabbi Schwartz? Rabbi Schwartz, what do you want to share? Do you want to share an email address? Do you want to share a number? What do you, you can, want? You can share the WhatsApp you have that, Rabbi uh, and, just, uh, uh, and the email also, you have also. So either way is okay. So what's 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 the email? Let's just put it out there. Uh, Y-S-C-H-W-A-R-T-Z. That's Y Schwartz. Y-S-C-H-W-A-R-T-Z. Yeah. At Orchos, O R. C H O S dot org. Okay. So um, by Schwartz at yeah. dot org. I, I posted it to everybody. You can see it on the chat. And Shem Menachem will put in the email. And they can just put in the subject, Coach Menachem. So I'll know how to filter the uh, messages. The emails. Okay. And uh, that's that. Let me just post it again. And. Um, Again, thank you to all the advertising sponsors that promoted the Liquid Scoop, Elena Ariel, Fanta Central, Chayla Kaufman. That's what this is, Robert Schwartz. Thank you for coming on. Tonight's show was very, very deep. We really covered a lot. Um, and um, you have to come on again. I think there's a lot of... Uh, <laughs> I think we have to do a share on Gilgulim, a share on Kabbalah, <laughs> a share on forgiveness. 
We got to do can, a show. I want of, I want of everything. Can I make a closing comment? Wait, wait, not yet, not yet. I'm gonna go over oh, now, okay. And then I'm gonna give it to you. And I told you, Rabbi Schwartz, I want it to be natural. After two hours, it comes to you naturally. So first, we go to Coach Menachem. Somebody writes, writes, forgiveness is a big topic. Yeah, I know a few people want a big share on forgiveness. Coach Menachem, wrap it up. Thank you very much. Um, again, like we started, you know, many people are confused when it comes to Elo, when it comes to Shoshana. I hope tonight we got some clarity, um, change uh, of perspective for many, just a different way of looking at it. And the concept that we picked up today, that what does Shem want from us? And by now, we should understand a little bit what it means not to be so focused on ourselves. So, because it's important to be other focused, to be there for others. And then we have meaning, connection in life. And like we heard, Hillel washed his own face to be there for others. So we all have to learn how to wash our own face, take care of ourselves so we can be there for others. And like we heard, we have to know our our, our, our own milers. If all you know is your chesroinus, then there's nowhere to go. You have to know your milers. And that's all part of the growth that we're looking for, to be able to be there for others by washing your own face, knowing your own milers, and taking care of yourself so that you can be there for others and not be so self-centered. And uh, Avada, whoever can learn time of the Vera, you know, we can start. There's a few days left. And uh, I'm sure we can learn that after Elul, after Shoshana, because this is a void of the of, of the year in Metz Hashem. So Shkoyach Habe Schwartz for being with us and giving us some of your insights and Hashem should help. We should be able to grow, continue growing and get closer with ourselves, our family, and ultimately with Hashem and Metz Hashem. Hey, Rabbi Yitzhak Schwartz, hey, Rosh Hashana, we're getting there two weeks, two, three weeks from Hashana. Um, leave us with closing statements, closing vart, a chizik, something. Leave okay, let me tell you a story. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you to uh, Nach and Menosher for making it possible uh, for uh, being brave enough to put on in the public, put out in the public, which uh, no other from publication was brave enough to do. Uh, I don't, I don't blame them because they have business models and it's got to make money. So this doesn't make money. That's right. But anyway. We have, um, of we have nothing to lose. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Very good. Heavy mechashev. It's a connected story. I'll go upon him. Let me tell you a story. We'll close with a story. I think it's very inspiring. I was invited to a Sheva, the, the power of the mitzvah of after Akhmer. I was invited to a Sheva Bokas by a cousin of mine. And I, I, I couldn't come. I was in a veilis on my mother, the Kroni Lebrochen. I couldn't come. I said, I, I told my cousin, I can't come. I'm in a veilis. She said, no, you have to come. I said, why do I have to come? She says, because nobody else, you have to speak, and nobody else can speak at this Sheva Bokas besides you. He comes from very Chassidish oil and very from people all around him and everything. But the Chos, and I said, so, so why, do I, why does it have to be me? He said, because this is a very special Chos. I said, what's so special about him? He says, I can't tell you everything, but he's, he's black. So the sensitivity involved in dealing with the situation required a little bit more than somebody, the normal people that were around him. I said, okay, I'll come. I can't eat there. And if there's music, I have to walk out. When there's music, I have to walk out. I came, I prepared something to say, and I didn't eat. And uh, whenever there was music, I walked out. So the, the music started, and I walked out. And as I walked out, remember, the Hosin is black, so I figured he's, he must be a gear, right? Um, as I walked out, I see another young man. He's also black. I think, okay, you know, he must have brought a friend with him along the ride to, to Gators or something. As I'm walking by him, I'm the whole time thinking about my mother. She was she was an atomic generator of love. I, I can't describe my mother enough. She loved every year, every person. It was not She was like a tsunami of love. In any event, I'm thinking about my mother. And uh, as I walk by, I see this young man, this other black man. He's got a tattoo on his forearm. And the tattoo was huge. It covered his whole forearm. And it said, spread the love. Spread the love. And I'm thinking, wow. I didn't see this stun. There's got to be some purpose of this. 
what did he tattoo on his arm? Spread the love. And he's he's certainly, in my mind, he's, you know, he's a gear, obviously coming to, uh, or is on his way to Geras, and he's going to find out that that tattoo is is a is a very very dishonorable thing to have on your arm. It's a big it'd be a big bizillion for him. So I decided, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna try and help this young man. Give him a cushion now. I need to give him a cushion because he's going to get hurt by the comments he's going to get about this tattoo. So when I came back into the room after the music stopped and it was my time to speak, I said, you know, this is an amazing Sheva Brokers. I see there's a young man over at the end of the table. He was the one with the tattoo. And he got kola tora kula on his arm. Spread the love. After Anyway, I tied that into Hosan and Kala, but I did talk about after about love, how this person got the whole thing. Okay, I left the Sheva Brothers. The next day I get a phone call from the, the Hosan's uh, aunt. And she says, Rabbi Schwartz, can I talk to you? I said, yeah, she was at Sheva Brothers also. I said, sure. She said, I want to talk about what you said yesterday. I thought, oy, oy, oy. I really messed up, obviously. But she said, sure, go. I said, sure, you can tell me. And she said, uh, you don't know what she did to this young man last night. And my blood pressure started going up. And I said, what? I hope I didn't hurt him. She said, no, no, no. You changed his whole life. You changed his entire life. He is the Hassan's brother. And they're not Gerim. They're both Yidin. The mother was a kid who went off the derech, and she married a black person. And the kids, even though they're black, and black, I mean black, says they're Yidin, and they recently found out they're Yidin, because she didn't even tell them in the beginning. The Chosen became a full bald tshuva. But the other brother with the tattoo was the opposite of bald tshuva. He was against anything that had to do with Yiddishkeit. And what, because of what you said last night, he couldn't sleep the whole night. He says, he's not leaving Israel. Get me a yeshiva. Get me a yeshiva. The kachav. Later, I heard from the chosen, another simple, several months later, he said, Rabbi Schwartz, you don't know what you did to my brother. I said, yeah, I do. Your aunt called me up already. She told me. He said, no, I want to tell you more. That my brother and I, you know, he was always the, the host himself was very intelligent, very gifted, very athletic, very charismatic. And the, the brother was not. He was lacking in all those areas. He was kind of in my shadow all the time. And he was always so anti-Jewish. Anything to do with Israel, he was anti. He was pro-Palestinian. Never, he didn't want to come to the Hasana because it's Israel. Finally, somebody pressured him enough that he came. And now he's going to yeshiva? You don't know what she did to him. I said to the Chosen, I said, you see, he wasn't anti-anything. He was in need of attention and somebody to give him a hug. That's the power of Mitzvah that is mamish klau godl b'tayra. Mamish klau, you can break down all the mechitzes in one word. And I encourage everybody in Elo, the in Elo, to cultivate it in your homes. Cultivate the Bengal and the Cultivate the Chesed. Cultivate the acceptance. Cultivate the love, especially with the kids who are having a hard time with Yiddishkeit. Praise them for the Bengal and the Praise them for the Chesed. Encourage them to tell them this is the Spitz of Avodah Hashem. Tell them you're Kula Kula. Cultivate that atmosphere at home, at your Shabbos tables, whenever you can. It'll be a tremendous preparation for being Kabul, Ol Mabra Shemaim on Rosh Hashanah. Maridik, Maridik, thank you. Beautiful closing. Shem, hope to see everybody next week, same time, same place, with Matas Miller. Please join us. Shabbat Schwartz, again, thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.